Well, a wonderful Monday afternoon. How are you? Welcome to the Jason Greger Show on Sports 1440, Orders Nation, YouTube, and Facebook. It is the uh, Gregor Show, as always, presented by PlayAlberta.ca, Alberta's only regulated online gambling website where 100% of the revenue stays right here in the province at PlayAlberta.ca. We have a long show. We'll uh, talk, of course, uh, lots of hockey. We're going to talk um, some, uh, a little bit of a golf. We're going to talk some soccer. Uh, also, we will uh, set up the orders, taking on the uh, San Jose Sharks. How about this? The Sharks, the orders' final home game of the season. San Jose will make their first appearance in Edmonton. Now, they come in in 32nd place. They have secured last place in the league. They will have the best odds. 25.5% chance of winning the la the draft lottery. Chicago is second at 13. Uh, Anaheim is uh, third at, uh, at 11 and a half. It's actually 13 and a half for Chicago. So uh, those three teams, basically uh, 50% uh, odds, but that means there's a 50% chance. None of them are going to win. It. So uh, we'll see the, the NHL. I don't know. If, maybe it's just me, but it's odd that on April 15th, they haven't announced the exact date yet of the draft lottery. It's going to be either May 6th or 7th, but they haven't secured the date yet. What? Like, I'm trying to remember. Like, I thought last year they had the date secured, like, well in advance. So, well, seems odd, but we'll see. Uh, the Oilers, you will get Connor McDavid back tonight, Order fans. Evander Kane will get a rest. Uh, McDavid is in. Uh, Adam Henrique will play with McDavid and Hyman. Nugent Hopkins with Dreisaitl and Fogel. You'll have McLeod with Holloway and Perry. And uh, Carrick with Yanmark and Connor Brown. And then the Orders will uh, wrap up their regular season. They're the only team that has three games in the final four days of the season. There's uh, 13 teams who have one game remaining. And uh, quite a few of them are going to end their season tonight. So, yeah, it's not an ideal end of the season schedule for the Emden Orders when you look at uh, how many games they have to play and when they're going to play. Um, it sounds like, and I've said this last week, like the NHL was really pushing to start on Sunday night, the 21st for the Edmonton Orders. The Orders would love to start later, but uh, TV talks and the uh, broadcasters, hey, you got Connor McDavid? They're going to want him to play in the opening weekend of the NHL playoffs. I get it. It's just, it's just how it is. But so wasn't great for the Orders. We'll see. Do they get an extra day between games at some point in the series? We'll find out. Uh, if they're playing L.A., they might because there's all sorts of uh, events planned uh, in L.A. at that arena, so it can be difficult to uh, to get times, right? You got the uh, the Clippers in the postseason. Uh, the Lakers are in the play-in round. Uh, that's all starting. They always got a boatload of concerts there, so uh, anytime you're playing against L.A., there's there's a chance that uh, you know it's a little bit uh, more challenging to uh, to get in, So uh, so we'll see about that. As always, you can get involved. You can text us. 833-401-1440, 833-401-1440 in our E-Well inbox. Stuart Skinner will get the start in goal. The uh, orders will go with their uh, regular six defensemen. Echo and Bouchard, Nurse and CC Kulak and uh, DeHarnay. Now, Philip Roberg will be joining the orders for their final two home games of the season. And... I think there's a chance, you know, Ekholm gets a rest. I could see them resting Ekholm and Bouchard in the same game if they wanted and then just play Stetcher and, and, and Broberg, right? You could do that. Now, maybe they won't, but they could. I, I If you have Philip Broberg here, I would play in both games. Why wouldn't you? So he'll play back-to-back. -back. So you could rest Ekholm one day. You could rest Nurse one day if you want. And then uh, Bouchard, maybe, if you like, plays the most minutes on the team. Connor McDavid coming off an injury. Would he play Monday, Wednesday, and then have Thursday off? I That would be my guess, except if Vancouver loses to the Calgary Flames tomorrow night. Because if the orders are victorious tonight, which they should be, and then they play the last game at Mullet Arena, because even if the Coyotes come back, they ain't coming back to Mullet Arena in Arizona for a new franchise down the road. We know that. So this will be the last ever NHL regular season game at the Mullet Arena. So McDavid could play there because then he gets Thursday, Friday, Saturday off. Now, if by chance Vancouver loses in Calgary, the Orders win tonight, they win on Wednesday. Then that Thursday game, Vancouver's in Winnipeg. The Orders are in Colorado. 
could mean something enough. Now, maybe they don't care. And I don't think they should care if I'm honest. I, I know there's lots of people like, well, you don't want to play Vegas. Why? If you're confident in your team, you should be confident. You can be Vegas. You can be Nashville. You can beat LA. It doesn't matter. Like f catching Vancouver means then you would probably play Nashville. Most likely. They're probably going to finish in the first wall card spot. So I, but to me, you, if you believe your team is good, then you should be like, yeah, we'll play anybody. They're not going to play Dallas, who I think would be the toughest opponent in the first round. They're not playing Colorado and Winnipeg, right? They're not playing Vancouver. So any of the teams they face are below them in the standings, Nashville, LA, or Vegas, all three to me, there shouldn't, there shouldn't be, uh, some, you can respect your opponent, but I'll tell you, the Edmonton owner should have zero reason to fear any one of those teams. Because if you can't beat them, then you don't deserve to win the cup. It's that simple. Harsh, but it's true. That's just how it is. It is a, it's that simple. You got to be able to beat those teams if uh, if you want to win the cup. And I, I think the orders can beat them. Doesn't mean they will. But uh, I would think that the Edmonton Oilers uh, definitely are a team that should be able to uh, to beat them. Um, the uh, The Masters wrapped up and... As predicted by a lot of people, it ended up not being that close as uh, Scotty Scheffler ran away with it on Sunday, finishes with a four-stroke lead over uh, Ludwig Adberg. Uh, then you had uh, Tommy Fleetwood, uh, Colin uh, Morikawa, and uh, Max Homa all at uh, Homa. Uh, there's five-stroke difference. Uh, you know, he, he was two strokes back when the uh, the round started, ended up uh, seven behind Scotty Scheffler, who was the uh, the number one golfer on the planet right now. And uh, he's pretty dominant. There's uh, there's no question about that. He is uh, he's very dominant. I know uh, a guy who was dominant for a long time, uh, Tiger Woods. Unfortunately, he's just he, there's a great athlete who's now obviously there's been a lot of injuries, right? Like I think he's got a fused back, he's got a fused ankle. Like uh, you could see the uh, the fatigue and and tiredness. And you know, I'm not sure how much there's left in his game. Right? Like he had two good rounds, made the cut. Then uh, blew up, shot an 82, and then a 77. Finishes at uh, plus 16. So in uh, in 60, of the 60 guys who made the cut, he ends up uh, 60th. So unfortunate for him and all those who are uh, fans. Adam Hadwood didn't have a great tournament. Uh, ended up uh, plus 12. And uh, Corey Connors, who uh, starts well, but Corey Connors, when he gets to the Masters, if there's one thing he'll look to improve on, it's his weekend play. He's, he hasn't been great at Augusta on the weekend. Canadian women. Big win over the U.S. six five entertaining game at the world at the Women's World Hockey Championships. Shout out to uh, you know just well the, the overall I thought it was I thought it was an excellent game right and uh, much more entertaining than the uh, the one nothing um, game for the in the preliminary round right and that's and one nothing games can be excited but they're not always as exciting as a six five game right because there's not many lead changes. Right, but uh, kudos to Danielle Serdakny, local product. Oh, how about that? You score an OT winner to win the world championship, man. Like, think about it. Like, what's the only thing that could be better? I guess a gold medal at the Olympics. Be about it. Like, that's a pretty big goal in in her young career. So, uh, good for her. That's kind of the the next wave uh, for the Canadian women. Uh, on the show today, uh, George Mumford. Will uh, join us. He's an author. He's also he's a performance enhancer, right? That's what he does. And he's working with the Edmonton Oilers. He's worked with Kobe Bryant. He's worked with a lot of people. So we'll talk to George coming up right away. Kind of what uh, what's the plan of attack for him? Uh, Patrick uh, Kinahan will join us. Uh, we'll talk about uh, Salt Lake and uh, really in Utah, uh, the NHL is coming. When it's official remains to be seen, but it uh, it looks like it's coming. Uh, Dan Rusinowski will be by. We'll have uh, Andy Petrillo, Mark Spector, Kevin Woodley, uh, Wanya Gretzka as always now, our uh, Monday co-host. We'll get to uh, your thoughts at 833-401-1440. Hey, Greg's after his performance, you think Tiger's finished when it comes to winning another major? Spinner. Unfortunately for him, yes. I don't. Like, to to win a major is hard enough when you're healthy. To win a major... In your 40s, very difficult to do. Then when you've got massive surgeries to your body, harder to do. So, yeah, and then you got to put in four really good rounds. Even when you're the peak of your game, there's lots of really good guys who don't win. 
So yes, I I'd be stunned when you look at at just where his body is at. I don't think it's his ability. I think it's more of his body. I think he just wears down. And like if you look how he played on Thursday and Friday, and then how he played on Saturday and Sunday, it's like a massive difference. Like you're talking a, a difference of what? Four, like 14 or 15 stroke difference. Like that's huge. So, yeah. Hey, boys, I'd love to see Vegas play Dallas. Payments for their uh, LTIR antics from uh, Sid. Yeah, well, we, I should point out there's not, it's the injury, I don't question, but it's the old adage. So, Vegas, I think their last game is Thursday. So, he can't play on Thursday, but then two days later, magically, he's healthy. Like, come on. I think he could play Thursday if he had to. If the playoffs started Thursday, he'd be playing. Right now, it's nothing against the rules. So that it's to me, I don't really blame a team. I blame the rules. The rules are dumb. And it's a very easy solution. Make your playoff game day roster needs to be cap compliant, which is still a break for teams because your game day roster is 20 skaters. 20 skaters cap compliant, which Vegas was, by the way, last year. Okay? I know a lot of people get up and say, ah, oh, they're really benefiting. They're cheating. Meh. Their last year playoff game day roster was cap compliant. Okay. It was the year before people. I don't know why people use this online. Oh, it's a third year. Mark Stone got injured. Yes. Three years, two years ago in 2022, they were in first place. He went on LTIR for two months when he came back with 10 games to go in the regular season, which by the way, now he counts on the cap. They were in ninth place when he came back, didn't make a difference. They finished in ninth. So where's the cap circumvention there? He was clearly hurt. They were in first place. Think they faked the injury for what? So they go from first to ninth? Come on. Doesn't look good, though. I don't doubt that. I don't doubt he's hurt, but the timing is somewhat shady or convenient, shall we say. Um, the uh, the orders, Connor McDavid, 100 assists tonight, looking to join a very exclusive club. Him and Kucherov both could join it this week. It's crazy. So we will uh, we'll see how that goes. Um, the uh, order Skinner will play tonight. Then obviously he'll play one of the final two games. He's not going to play back to back. We'll see who they rest. Um, will they bring up anybody other than Broberg? I think they have cap space to bring up another Ford if they want. So uh, there will be some moving parts here. I think when they get on the road into uh, Arizona and Colorado, uh, when we come back, we'll talk about the mental mindset guy who's worked with some of the best athletes in the world. Now he's working with the Hamilton orders. George Mumford joins us next on the Gregor show presented by play Alberta. Go to coffee.
220, welcome back. Jason Greger, Connor Holly with you on Sports 1440, Orders Nation, YouTube, and Facebook. It is uh, game day, the final home game of the regular season for the Edmonton Orders. The Orders, if they get a victory tonight, will be the sixth time in franchise history and the first time since 1988 that the Oilers end the season with 60 points on home ice. And remember, they started the year 1-4-1. and one in their uh, first six games at home. But uh, since then, they've obviously uh, turned it around and have been uh, quite successful and uh, looking to continue that. Um, domination, you want to be a good home team. Obviously, you want to be good on the road, but you want to be a dominant home team. Uh, the Orders do have the uh, the best home power play percentage in franchise history at 32.8%, uh, uh, beating last year, which was uh, 318 So, Oh, no, sorry, 338 this year was 32 last year, so. Not bad. Um, also, some uh, some changes tonight for the lineup. Connor McDavid, fairly big change. He is back in for the orders. Uh, Evander Kane will get a, a maintenance night off, according to head coach Chris Knobloch. Stuart Skinner is it uh, back in between the pipes for the orders. And away they go. They uh, they still have you know. A chance, albeit slim, but they have a chance to uh, finish first. They need to win all three of their remaining games, and they need um, Vancouver to lose to Calgary tomorrow, and then would have to lose in Winnipeg on Thursday, and have to lose both in regulation. Because if the Canucks get a single point, then they are uh, in the postseason. Looking at this season, Gregor, is this one of the more interesting seasons when it comes down to the races? I mean, the point race for a while there was unbelievable with McKinnon, Kucherov, and McDinnan, uh, McDavid making the push at the end there. This year, we've got a little bit of drama in the West, but out East, this wild card. Like, it seems like in years past, we've had situations where it's a little more settled in the last two, three games. Right now, we've got some situations that are come down right to the end. Well, there's only three teams who even know where they're finishing. Uh, Dallas is first in the Central, Toronto's third in the Atlantic, and uh, Tampa Bay is the number one wild card team. Those are locked in. But uh, they don't know their opponents. They're getting closer. We do know that Colorado's playing Winnipeg. We just don't know who's going to have home ice. Winnipeg has the advantage there. If uh, if Winnipeg wins one of their final two games, then uh, they will have a home ice advantage in that series because it'd be huge. Right? And they spanked Colorado 7 nothing uh, on the weekend. Uh, you saw Vegas come back. Like Colorado, in the month of April, has played four playoff teams in the West. Dallas, Edmonton, Vegas, and Winnipeg. And they've allowed 24 goals in those games. Their, their coach even came out and said, hey, man, Gordy, I've got to be better. Like, and it might be their guy. He's got a 925 save percentage. I know it hasn't been their guy all year long, but so what? They might have no choice at this point to, uh, to name him their, uh, their starter. Or maybe not their starter, but I wouldn't be surprised if, uh, if you see him get uh, a little bit um, more time. Hey, Gregor, why start Skinner tonight? There's no uh, there's no benefit in facing the shooters. Have Picker go the next two, and Skinner can start versus Colorado. From Coach Mike, do you think he's played too many games? No, I do not. You, you want to keep your goalie in rhythm. There's way too much focus on, oh, he's played too many games. Oh, he's tired. Stuart Skinner, by the time the playoffs will start, let's say they start on Sunday. Stuart Skinner in the first 20 days of April will have played six games. Six games in 20 days and he's going to be tired? No. I don't, uh, I have no issue with um, the usage for Skinner. He's a young guy. He's going to start 57 games this season because he's going to start one of the final two. I, I have no issue with his uh, his usage at all. Um, he has been well rested. And you know what? I had a really good conversation with Stuart Skinner talking about you know, what he learned last year in the playoffs, and, you know, he talked to Mike Smith. He, he had lengthy chats with uh, with Grant Fear about, you know, just the playoffs and, and what to expect. And, you know, he says, I wasn't physically tired at all. There's a few things he learned that maybe can help him uh, mentally. 
you know, he probably, you know, his words said, you know what, maybe I was on the ice too much for pregame on days like the morning skate. You know, get on, get your 50, because usually the goalies get out before the players anyway, right? They Because they just do some, you know, some technical work, right? And then you get to the morning skate, boom, you can get off. And then, you know, Calvin, guys want shots. Calvin Picker could stay on and he can get the shots. Right? And, and away you go. So I, I don't, I don't, I don't have much concern. Like I can't, no one can guarantee who's going to play well and on the playoffs. I can't guarantee it, but I don't really have much um, concern over Stuart Skinner not being able to perform in the postseason. He's been pretty good down the stretch. Like you look at all Stuart Skinner's numbers under knob block. They're, they're really good. I don't the, like the one goalie who's clearly better is Hellebuck, but you don't mean him until the third round. And you know what? Your goalie doesn't have to win you every series. Stuart Skinner just plays sound. If the team defense is good, if the offense is good, I think the orders can go and then go far. But uh, to me, looking, it makes sense to play Skinner tonight because I'm sure they had conversations. What do you want? Like, what's the rhythm you like? You play tonight, then he probably, maybe he plays Wednesday. So he's either going to get two days off between games and play Thursday and then have another two days off and play Sunday. Or... He'll play Wednesday and then have three days off. Well, not off because obviously they, you know, they work. And you know what's funny? Skinner and Pickard both told me that they were taking more shots on the days they weren't playing than when they are playing. So I, I really don't. I'm not too concerned whatsoever. We have George Connor. Not yet. Not yet. Brad's just trying to get a hold of his people now. Oh, all right. So. Gigi, we might have to have a few conversations with George. <laughs> right? Hey, we're all, we're all about uh we're all about uh you know the performance and mindfulness. Well, hey, what about being on time? Talk to him about that. I think that's a pretty big thing. So, we'll see. Uh, a few other things to discuss. Uh now the games tonight because man, if if you're a hockey fan, which I'm assuming most of you listening are, there there's lots of playoff implications tonight. So, obviously the Detroit Red Wings, they host Montreal, the Red Wings they're in a huge battle for the uh, for the final wild card berth in the in the Eastern Conference. The the Islanders would have to have a major collapse not to get in, right? If they win one of two, they're in. Um, even if they probably uh, go o one and one, they probably get in. So Washington has two games left. Philly only has one, so Philly can't catch the Islanders. So the Islanders have to worry about the Capitals, the Red Wings, and the Penguins. And if they get one point, the Penguins can't catch them. So you would need to then, if you get one point, the Capitals and the Red Wings both have to win. And guess what? They play each other, so they can't. So the Islanders are, you know, as long as they get a point, they're, uh, they're in. So um, it comes down to Washington, Detroit, and probably Pittsburgh. Now, the Flyers, I guess, if the Capitals, the Red Wings, and the Penguins all lose tonight in regulation, then you could have a win and you're in scenario for the Flyers because they own the tiebreaker on uh, on those teams. It's kind of crazy. So tonight's games that uh, that will matter in that regard. You have uh, Montreal is in Detroit. You have Nashville in Pittsburgh, and that's the uh, Predators' final game of the regular season. If they win or if they get a point, they guarantee themselves the uh, the second wild card spot. The Bruins are in Washington. Charlie Lindgren is going to start his fifteenth game in 16 for the uh, Capitals. So that's a huge game for them. And yeah, those are the three. And then you have some seeding ones like the Rangers. If they win tonight, they will lock up uh, first in the uh, East and, and first in their division. Boston uh, needs a victory tonight. Uh, if they get one, that would uh, secure them first place. And then they would take on Tampa Bay. So if they win, we know they're taking on Tampa Bay. Because they will, because I I shouldn't say that because there is still an outside chance that they could, the Boston Bruins could win the East, but it's really low. Carolina would have to choke here and not get a point or, or a win. And then the, and the Rangers would have to lose tonight and Boston would have to win both of their games uh, to get in. So the odds are low, but let's just say Boston wins tonight. They're pretty much picking on uh, Tampa Bay. The uh, LA Kings are hosting the Minnesota Wild tonight. If the Kings win tonight, they still don't guarantee themselves third place. 
but they'll have 99 points. Uh, Vegas would need to win both of their games, and then L.A. would have to get no points in their final game of the season against the uh, Chicago Blackhawks. Possible, sure. We saw what happened last year to Pittsburgh, remember? They lost to Chicago, and that cost them getting into the playoffs. So there's never a guarantee on anything. So there's lots of playoff implications. The orders, of course, if they win tonight, they uh, they keep their hopes of first place in the Pacific alive. So that's really all they're playing for. They're either going to finish uh, second or first. Hey, guys, you have any concern about Knobloch's first NHL playoffs? Seeing Woodcroft get out coached last year makes me worry a little bit. Well, it was Woodcroft's second year. And what Woodcroft did has nothing to do with me and Chris Knobloch. I, Chris Knobloch has lots of different uh, approaches that, you know, that are different. Not necessarily better, just different. I think the one thing we've seen from Chris Knobloch, right from the time he took over, he really works hard at getting all players involved and making them feel something. He's not afraid. Like, look at him and Paul Coffey. I went over, uh, you know, basically since, uh, you know, the middle of March, the last month of the season, 14 games. And if you look at the distribution of the order's defensemen and minutes against the lead in middle, it's virtually from 71 to 69% from the players. 69% of their time or 71% of their time is against them. Like, they're not afraid to play DeHarnay and Kulak against the top teams. Now, come playoff time, everything's different. We'll see the matchups, but there were nurse and CC were struggling in March. So the coach is like, all right, we're going to make a change. And he, he didn't limit their overall minutes. He limits some of their tougher minutes. And so what does that do? That empowers your third pair of guys and it creates some internal competition. To me, that's what great coaching is. Now you just don't stick with that forever. If guys come back and play better again, then they get more ice time, more important ice time. That's a good thing. But I, I really don't see any connection between Knobloch and, and Woodcroft. They're, very, they're just two different people. right? I, whatever Woodcroft did really has zero bearing on what Knobloch's going to do. I don't see him. You know, he's very open. He's talked about, hey, don't expect us to have the same four lines in the playoffs. We haven't done it all year. Why are we going to do it? He has certain pairs he likes together, and then they move different guys around. Like Adam Henrique's going to play tonight with McDavid and Hyman. Nugent Hopkins back with Drysaddle and Fogel. Kane's getting a night off. So, no, I don't see the uh, um, the concern there. Hey, guys, the goaltending's been great. No concerns with Skinner's time. I'd like to see Broberg up and play from Steve. Well, Steve, like I said, he'll be up in Arizona, and I expect him to play uh, both games. Hey, guys, one bad game by Skinner, and Picker deserves to start the next game. Uh, nope. No, he does not. He is your starting goaltender. You don't – I'm guessing, hashtag working on his name, you've never coached because you don't coach all year long, and a guy has one bad game, and then you just throw him out. That's, you don't do that as a coach, right? You would need multiple to do it. Mike, right? when was the last time Skinner had a really bad game? I, I think that would show your team you're nervous and you're overreacting. So I don't, uh, I don't see it at all. Hey boys, it was sure nice seeing what uh, Henrik Lundqvist, Lundqvist had to say about uh, Skinner. Oh yeah, not surprising. Right, uh, like Kevin Woodley's been on the show for months, and I get that it, you know come, some people are like, "Well, hey, Henrik Lundqvist said it, so maybe it carries more weight." Maybe, but Kevin Woodley's been talking about Skinner, and he talks about his strengths, which are way more strengths than his one weakness. Right, cross plays off of the rush. Every goalie has one weakness. Right, like look at Sorokin's not even the main guy right now for the Islanders. It's crazy. Varamov is. That just shows you how tough that position can be at times. Finicky. So, I don't uh, I, I don't really have much concern with Skinner. I don't. No. My opinion does, is not going to impact the, the, how he plays. I'm not saying he's going to light it up. But I, I'll be surprised if Stuart Skinner really struggles. So. Hey, guys. Uh, I really hope the orders don't play on Saturday. James in the hood. James, I'm telling you, 100% the orders aren't playing on Saturday. Okay, there's zero chance. They are not starting Saturday. The earliest they will play is a Sunday. I think that's the most likely. There's an outside chance for those of you who have tickets and are planning on going to the game. It might be Monday, but uh, right now I probably lean towards Sunday, but I can tell you for sure it will not be on Saturday. They're not going to have the orders play six games in nine days and then make them play Saturday night. Not happening. Especially like the Rangers finish tonight. Nashville finishes tonight. 
Dallas, I think, is done tomorrow. There's lots of other teams. Um, now, Toronto's last game, I think, is Wednesday. Like, the East are all done on Wednesday. Like, there's no Eastern teams playing on Thursday. So, I think you could see, you might even see three Eastern Conference series play on Saturday. And then, you know, maybe they'll have a Dexter Day's rest in between. Right? Because usually they like to have two East and two West on each night. Doesn't always work out that way, but that's usually how it is, right? Like, there's four games each night, two in the East, two in the West. You have, like, an Eastern game, one starts at five our time, the next one starts at 5.30, which we both know is, like, 5.15 and 5.45. But whatever. They're, uh, they try to balance them out a little bit, and that's what I would ex- uh, expect it to, uh, to happen. So, 2.35, uh, quick break. We'll see if we uh, track down uh, George later on. We're going to, hey, we're going to talk to George. But uh, he's a pure performance uh, expert. It's hard to perform when you don't show up, George. So we'll be talking about that for sure. Uh, also, lots more texts coming in, 833-401-1440. We're returning to the Gregor Show presented by PlayAlberta.ca.
240. Welcome back. Jason Greger, Connor Halley with you on Sports 1440, Orders Nation, YouTube, and Facebook. Uh, hope you're having an awesome day. Lots more uh, texts to get to. Um, a lot of golf ones coming in on uh, Scotty Scheffler. Uh, people want, hey guys, you think Scotty Scheffler could uh, go after uh, Tiger Woods? Uh, wow. Well, let's, let's pump the brakes. Hey, like Tiger Woods had like his decade of dominance was amazing. What do you win? I think he won 14 majors, 13 majors in a decade. Like it was a ridiculous run. So, um, Hey man, I, I, uh, um, I like Scheffler His uh, I know if you look at his stroke play and stuff, like it's, it's the closest you've seen to anybody dominating over a period of time since tiger. So that's fair, but he's got a long ways to go to, uh, to get in that conversation. It would be fun. Yeah, there's no doubt about it. And, uh, and he's a pretty dominant player. So, uh, you know what? He, he was right in the running, right from start to finish uh, in this tournament. And, you know, you look at where his game is at right now, he'd be the favorite pretty much going into every major. Unless all of a sudden he gets banged up because, yeah, he is, uh, he is lights out. So it would be great, though, if he could get on a run and win, you know, a stretch where you're winning two, three consecutive majors. Right? The, would you do the uh, was it what they call it the Tiger Slam when he won uh, four in a row, not necessarily in the same year? That's damn hard to do. So, but yeah, I don't. I, I think sometimes we want to. We're so desperate to find the next one that you almost it, it's a it's weakening the greatness of a previous champion when a guy has some success for a bit. It's like, well, I think you could push to that. It's like, hey guys, you know. At 140 points, two or three years in a row. Do you think you can catch Gretzky? Eh, let's pump the brakes. Mahomes and Brady. Yeah. <laughs> the greatness of Mahomes. Can he catch Brady? Well, it's yeah. Well, it's hard in championships. <laughs> well, I think he's going to beat a lot of Brady's individual stuff. Like, there's oh, a yeah. lot of arguments to be made as a pure quarterback. Was Brady on better teams? Maybe. It's a different. Like, I'm a big believer. Teams win championships. Right? And Brady, obviously, has had an unreal career. There's no doubting it. But. What Pat Mahomes does as a quarterback, there's lots of things Brady can't do. He couldn't run like Mahomes. He can't, he wasn't sidearm. He wasn't throwing release points. He's just a different quarterback, right? Now it's a little bit new age for sure. But, you know, even if, when you look at today's quarterbacks, like they just throw the ball way more frequently than quarterbacks did in the 80s and the 90s. So of course they're going to have better passing yard totals, right? More touchdowns over the career because they're throwing it more. Just how it's going to be, but... Yeah, like Mahomes, if he got to five, then you might say, hey, maybe there's a chance. But that's pretty damn hard to do. Like, he's not even halfway there. He's won three, which is pretty good. So, yeah, I don't know if he could get to five. If he gets to five, unreal. Now, if he wins three in a row, that's something Brady never did. That might change the conversation. So that's what makes this coming year in the NFL rather intriguing. Let's get to the two-minute warning with uh, Cam Tate, brought to you by Legacy Heating and Cooling. Home of the no payments, no interest for one Full year on your AC unit. Don't wait till you're too sweaty and hot. Do it now at legacyheating.ca. Cam Tate, of course, a longtime uh, journalist and reporter here in Edmonton. Cam uh, is in a wheelchair. He has cerebral palsy. And uh, any of it will use his own words uh, clearly enough on radio, but through the wonders of technology, we have Cam now part of the show. Thanks there, Jason. Today of Cam's segment, Monday Morning Mission. The Edmonton Oilers have a clock. You know, one of those ones with the snappy red numbers near one of the dressing room doors. It read 1054 this morning when in he walked into the room. Blue t-shirt, blue shorts, bare feet. With that look we have come to know, even perhaps expect. The look of purpose, of competition, of it's all business. The look of Connor McDavid when there's something that needs to get done in a serious way. McDavid walked briskly to just a few feet in front of his stall in the Oilers dressing room. Reporters gathered around, much like when Grandma hands out her famous chocolate cookies in great anticipation. And then the question of the morning was asked, would he be playing in tonight's game, game number 80 for the Oilers? There was no humming or hawing, no looking outside the door to see if it was sunny, cloudy, raining, snowing, or a wicked wind wailing down Jasper Avenue. No, sir. But really? Yes, sir. After missing the three last Oiler games due to a lower body injury, and personally, I am curious of whether or not it was an ankle injury, 
McDavid said, he's playing tonight. And there's almost as many angles for number 97's return as there are in today's start of the Donald Trump trial in New York. Maybe not quite. Does McDavid and, for that matter, the rest of his order teammates still have a sour San Jose taste in his mouth from Cover Your Eyes, Oiler fans, November 9th when the Sharks gobbled up the Oilers 3-2? Or does the allure of registering his 99th assist in the final home game of the regular season appealing? Can anybody say fan appreciation night? Or does game 644 of McDavid's NHL career? On a Monday night, the start of the last week of regular season in, in Edmonton, mean Connor McDavid is treating it like another challenge to help his team. Only time will tell. The two-minute warning with Cam Tight, Monday's Friday's Jason Greger Show. Sports, 1440. So it's the order's final home game of the regular season tonight. Game 41, as I mentioned, an opportunity, if they win, to uh, reach these 60 points at home for the first time since 1998, the uh, second time, or sixth time, excuse me, in franchise history. They did it five times in the, uh, in the 80s. Not every year they won, like in 1985. They, uh, they had 59 home points and ended up to uh, dominate all the way to the uh, Stanley Cup. But the Oilers have become a really good home team. Like you look at their numbers, like dominant. They're not just winning. They are crushing teams at home. They're outscoring them 116 to 60 on home ice. So that's been, uh, it's been rather impressive. So we'll see. Uh, uh, I expect it to continue tonight. The uh, orders are 23, 4, and 2 under Chris Knobloch against the uh, bottom tier teams in the NHL, the bottom 11 teams. Like the lottery losers, if you want to call it that. The 11 that are in the lottery. San Jose is one of them. San Jose is right at the very bottom. Now, the San Jose Sharks, in a weird way, are responsible, maybe, for the order's massive climb up the standings. Because if they don't lose that game in San Jose, do you think they make the coaching change? They might not have. We'll never know. But they lost it. They made the decision. And then they, uh, now, and they might have anyway. We'll never know. But it uh, it allowed the orders to go on a run. Chris Knobloch came in. Paul Coffey came in. They changed some things. Uh, they kept some things for sure. They only talked about certain things that, the, that they were doing that they liked systemically. Then he made a few tweaks. Uh, how they use their personnel on the penalty kill was one. How he likes to come out with McDavid dry settle right after the penalty kill uh, was another. All right, Paul Coffey really instilled a need and a want for his defensemen to make plays, not just dump the puck out. I think that's led to a, a significant decrease in the amount of time they spent in the defensive zone, which has led to a decrease and reduction in the goals against, which has been the Oilers' Achilles heel for many years. Five-on-five five goals against was the one area they just they couldn't find much consistent improvement in. But they have under Knobloch. And when you look at history, teams who are good limiting goals five-on-five five have a really good chance in the playoffs. Not a guarantee. Just a pretty good chance. So uh, the orders... We'll find out starting this weekend, baby. I can't believe the playoffs are almost here. It's uh, fantastic. Also, today, I uh, should mention, we uh, we debut a new contest on the show. Here comes the sun. We partnered up with uh, Action Electrical. And, man, one of you is going to be a huge winner. Now, you can have it for yourself or you can, uh, you know, if you want to nominate someone else, that's your choice. So uh, we'll do this uh, later on in the show today, likely in the 4 o'clock hour. So uh, here comes the sun. What's the contest? The winner is going to receive a turnkey solar system for your home, valued up to $15,000, courtesy of Action Electrical. Now, that includes the, the a site assessment, structural engineering and permitting costs, and the supply and installation of a solar system on your home. Now, here are some things you need to have. Number one, you got to own your own home. Okay, so you got to be a homeowner or the person you want to gift it to. They have to be a homeowner. Uh, must reside uh, Edmonton and surrounding area, 50 kilometers from Edmonton. Uh, you need now, because here's why some technical stuff, because you need newer shingles 12 years or newer 
on your home. The reason is because if you have really old shingles, you put this on, then you're, you got to replace your shingles. It's way too costly, right? So that ends up costing you way too much money. So um, then when we have our daily uh, winner, you are, uh, once you win, we get all your name and information, then you will submit. This is how you finalize your entry. You will submit an email and I'll tell you where you email to, uh, to Gregor at Sports1440. And the email is your 100% confirmation that you're in the draw. And so you email, hey, why do you want it? Why do you need it? Or why do you want to offer it to someone else? It's your choice. You can win it for yourself or you can nominate someone who you think uh, would benefit from this. Uh, not only, first of all, the savings of the 15 grand, that's just for the, the package. But then all of the savings for the next how many years and what you're going to save on your uh, electricity bills on your home. So it's uh, it's an unreal package. So it's valued at up to uh, 15,000. Now, if you have a massive home and you and you want to have a package that's bigger, then you can just take the 15 grand and put it towards that. And if there's a few extra that it costs 17, but normally like a really good average one is about 10 to 12. So we went with 15. So it's likely going to cover a lot of you. So keep that in mind. We'll do that every day here for the next month on the show. And then we will have the draw and uh, somebody will win. Woo! pretty good prize really good prize so big thanks to everyone at action electrical hey boys there's a coach knoblock uh, has he won a championship at uh, any level uh yes he has he has uh he has won uh two different um uh championships uh both in the uh, whl and in the ontario uh, hockey league right uh one with the kootenai ice in 2011 and then again with the uh, Erie Otters in 2017 and uh, did not win a championship uh, with Hartford in the American League. So there you go. Lots of you are wondering about the start time. There's nothing official because they don't know who's playing yet. So as the week goes along and we get more matchups secured, that's when the, uh, the because the, I'll tell you right now. So this is how it works. You have the American TV contract, you have the Canadian guys, Sportsnet, obviously uh, ESPN and TNT, and they're like, hey, there's certain days, certain teams they want playing. That's just how it is. So until you know the match, I was like, I'm, they have a few, I was told you got like their whiteboard and here's the options. Because if we look at it on who can play who, right? Like Vancouver, most likely, not 100%, but most likely is going to open up against Nashville, right? Edmonton, against LA or Vegas. But that one's like, Vegas is only one point back of LA. Now, it's kind of two because LA has the tiebreaker, right? So if LA wins one of their final two games, Vegas has to win both of their games. Now, Vegas has Anaheim and Chicago. Very plausible they could win both those games. Tonight, I think, is the big one. If LA wins tonight, they play Minnesota. Like, I know Pittsburgh did it last year, so you never say never. But man, would the Kings then drop and lose their final game of the season to Chicago. Like anything can happen. We've seen it last year, but I don't know. I think if LA wins tonight, there's a really good chance they'll finish third and it's probably going to be Edmonton, but you know what? Like the flames, they, they've been battling hard. Could they beat Vancouver tomorrow night? And if they do, then the Canucks have to fly to Winnipeg on Thursday and would have to beat the jets. If the orders can uh, defeat San Jose, Arizona, and Colorado. So lots has to happen, right? That's just in the West. Uh, we know Dallas is first, so they'll face either uh, whoever is the uh, the second wildcard team, which right now seems to be Vegas, but it's definitely far from long. In the East, uh, Boston, if they win tonight, they will uh, guarantee themselves they're going to play, um, well, again, not a guarantee, but pretty good odds they would play Tampa Bay. Now, if the Rangers win tonight, then they guarantee that they finish first and that they will play whoever is the second wildcard team, which is likely going to be Washington, Detroit, Philly or Pittsburgh, right? We don't know who, but we would know the Rangers and the Rangers season ends tonight. Mark, I like, I'll be stunned if the Rangers aren't playing on Saturday. Stunned. Like how much more time do they need off? Number one and B, they love the afternoon games on Saturdays in the U S New York loves their afternoon home games. It makes too much sense. So we don't know any of the matchups yet other than Colorado and Winnipeg. We just don't know who's hosting who. So there we go. Hey, boys, I've had panels on my house for a year, and it's a game changer. Would love to win this. Eliminate their power bill from Brent. Well, there you go. There's a guy who's got the uh, solar panels on now. Loves it. Like, think about it. 
You're eliminating your power bill right now because we all know anybody who, who owns their place, you've seen the increase in your power bill. It's a uh, geez. Like what's gone up a higher percentage, food or power? Yes. It's tad, uh, it's tad expensive right now. So this could save you a lot of money. A lot of money. So there you go. Lots of other texts coming in. 833-401-1440. Hey, guys, I'm curious how the uh, Hart Trophy voting is. Does it wait until the end of the playoffs or does the playoffs matter from Stan? Uh, Stan, the uh, voting for all of like, well, the awards that are voted on by the Professional Writers uh, Association, is, which is the Hart Trophy, the Norris Trophy, the Lady Bing, the uh, the Selkie, and uh, which one am I missing? I think I would know this off the top of my head. But uh, anyway, there's five awards. Then they vote on the first and second team All-Stars, right? Lady Bing, Norris, Selkie. Uh, they don't vote on the, we don't vote on the Vesna. Um, oh, yeah, the Calder for the Rookie of the Year. That's the other one. So those, you have to submit your ballot by Friday night. It always has to be in before the playoffs begin. The playoffs, this is only a regular season award. So uh, all ballots have to be in by the uh, the 19th. Otherwise, if your ballot's not in, it's not, then you uh, lose it. And in a lot of cases, then you'll lose your voting rights because not every member who's a member gets to vote, right? Um, and, and please don't, oh, it's Eastern bias. It's not Eastern bias. I don't think people understand. It is equal representation from every city. So So it's all equal. And then they have some national guys, but each that's not like, you know, Toronto has eight voters based on Toronto. No, they don't. Now they have more people in the uh, professional hockey writer association, but they only get the same amount of votes as Edmonton has and the same amount of votes as Tampa has and away you go. It's kind of how it works. They, they want to make it very, um, very even across the board. And actually, if you look at the results, the last 10 years has been more winners across those five awards from the Western Conference than there is from the Eastern Conference. The uh, people still like to repeat Eastern bias. Why? I don't know. Because there's no actual factual data to back it up. 258, let's get to the uh, con man and a sports 1440 update brought to you by the Alberta GMC dealers. Get up to $6,500 catch purchase credit on a 2024 Sierra 1500 Denali Ultimate only during truck month in the month of April. Uh, check out more at gmcoffers2fs.ca. This is a sports 1440 update. Game day, the Edmonton Oilers back in action. Taking on the San Jose Sharks. Puck drop just after 7.30 down at Rogers Place. Connor McDavid returning to action in this one elsewhere. Canadians taking on the Red Wings. Lightning host the Sabres. Islanders in Jersey. Penguins taking on the Preds, the Bruins in Washington, Rangers host the Senators and the Wild taking on the Kings. Bill Zito has been promoted by the Florida Panthers, announcing that his general manager also serves the team's president of hockey operations. The promotion came with a multi-year extension. Terms were not revealed. Major League Baseball, the Jays are in action. The team also announced that Danny Jansen has been activated from the 10-day IL ahead of Monday's series opening game against the New York Yankees. Down at the Rogers Center, Jansen missed time with a fractured bone in his wrist. He suffered the injury back in March. Elsewhere around the majors, the Twins are in Baltimore. Phillies host the Rockies, Giants in Miami. You got the Mets taking on the Pirates, Padres in Milwaukee. Diamondbacks host the Cubs. Cards in Oakland. Mariners hosting the Reds. And the Nationals take on the Dodgers. One final from earlier today. Guardians blank the Red Sox 6-0. One game in the WHL tonight. It's game three. Winterhawks taking on Everett. Portland leads that series two games to none. And later tonight, you've got the WNBA draft going from Brooklyn. The Indiana Fever holding the number one overall pick with Caitlin Clark. Almost a lock to go first overall. That will start at 5 o'clock. Coming up in hour two of the Jason Greger Show, we will be joined by Patrick Kinahan of Salt Lake City Sports as well as Mark Spector of Rogers Sportsnet. I'm Connor Halley. This has been a Sports 1440 Update. This is Sports 1440, a Stingray radio station. Broadcast.
Just after 3 o'clock, it's game day. Welcome back to the Gregor Show on Sports 1440. Orders Nation YouTube and Facebook presented by PlayAlberta.ca where you can get in the game if you've yet to try it. Use the uh, promo code SPORTS50. You'll get a free $50 wager at PlayAlberta.ca. I'm Jason Gregor. He is Connor Halley. We are live in the E-Well Studios uh, where uh, electricity and sports collide to add quite the spark to the show. E W E L. C A coming up. Uh, we're going to talk whew, a city that I'm guessing or a state that is uh, pretty excited. We'll also uh, talk to Dan Rusinowski about the uh, shark spec. Actually, we're going to rotate things around here a little bit. Uh, Spec's going to join us today in the uh, three o'clock hour. We'll have uh, Woodley, of course, in the five o'clock. Andy Petrillo will be by. We'll have our uh, Here Comes the Sun first day to uh, qualify somebody to win a $15,000 installed solar system on your home or oof, you could be a really nice person you get to gift it to someone it's your choice so if you go to jasongregor.com all the details are there on uh, what you can win and how you can win it but a uh, $15,000 package not to mention all the savings you're going to have once it's installed uh, to your power bill that is going to be huge huge so nice I like it now Let's uh, go around the NHL, brought to you by McDonald's, where, uh, hey, stop in at uh, McDee's. Did you know all the locally owned and operated McDonald's? Uh, every time you're stopping in, maybe you're having a Big Mac, maybe you're having fries, cheeseburger, just a milkshake. Portion of those sales all goes towards the Ronald McDonald House. It's fully funded from the, uh, the local Edmonton McDonald's. And uh, anybody who's ever been to the Ronald McDonald House or knows somebody who's been there, it's an amazing facility. So, hey. You can always feel a little bit good about yourself knowing that uh, by supporting them, uh, you are helping those families in need at Ronald McDonald House. And uh, let's talk about uh, uh, a state and city that's uh, on the verge of being pretty excited. Uh, from KSL uh, Sports, uh, that's in Salt Lake City, Patrick Kinahan uh, joins us as a, it sounds like a Utah. Well, it's not official, Patrick, but man, uh, it's pretty close that uh, the NHL is coming to Utah. Oh, yeah, I think it's just about guaranteed. We are going to be giving a puck here, and away we go. NHL coming to Salt Lake City. How about that? How, uh, you know, what's, what's, the, what's the excitement level? How, how much of a hockey state do you think Utah is? Well, we'll find out. <laughs> I mean, that, that's the big thing. Ryan Smith, who owns the Jazz, the NBA team, and he's a native son of Utah, and he's determined to make this as big as possible, and I think that he's known for several weeks that it's coming and he's going to be the principal owner here and he's going to do everything he can to get the sport going. I think that I compare it to what happened in Las Vegas with the Golden Knights. I have family in Vegas and for your listeners who don't know, we're about six hours north of Vegas up the freeway I-15 that'll take you all the way into Southern California and you have to go right through the heart of Las Vegas. So I've been down to Las Vegas many, many times and the Golden Knights, even if you weren't a hockey fan, if you didn't think you were one, you became one. And when they were in the playoffs, I was attending a concert, and it was an outdoor concert. And in the back, they had open bars with hotel or TVs, I should say. And the concert ended, and I think they were starting maybe the second period at the time, and nobody left. Everybody just turned around instead of because the TVs were behind us. And they all just turned around and watched it. And they were so into it. And Utah obviously being close, a number of people from Nevada are around here. And you saw tons of paraphernalia representing the Golden Knights. So I think it's going to be the same type of thing here that, well, even if you aren't one, you're going to become one. And there's plenty of people who are hockey fans. And there's going to be a whole lot of converts because it's going to be, I don't want to say in your face because that sounds negative, but it's going to be hard not to be a part of it. It was like the Winter Olympics when they came in 2002. If you weren't into it, well, you really had no choice because you couldn't go anywhere that people weren't talking about it. And obviously with all the events, and it won't be to that large international scale, although like, certainly the hockey was. And this is something that I think is going to take off in this community, much like it did in Las Vegas. 
Now, Patrick, I've been reading some stories online that, uh, you know, there's talk about a new arena because the one that they have right now isn't ideal for hockey. It's kind of similar to the Great West American arena that they had when they moved there. And like in Brooklyn, where you can have 14,000, which is obviously a massive increase, almost three times as much as what they play at the Mullet Arena uh, right now. But it's not the long term home. Um, The the new arena. um, And my understanding is. Part of the deal is if they get the new arena, they get some funding and helping with the the state that it's got to be a Utah team. So it won't be the Salt Lake, whatever. It'll be Utah. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. I think that's going to happen. That's always somewhat controversial when you have billionaires and Ryan Smith is a billionaire. He sold his company several years ago for $8.5 billion, That's with a B. And when they go to ask for public money, it's controversial. So you're going to have a lot of people say, well, pay for itself. Why should I be paying for it? But the reality is if they don't do it here, they'll just go to another city and somebody else will do it. So yeah, uh, I've known for several months now that the Delta Center where the Jazz play, which is just uh, west of downtown, like only about a mile, it's part of the downtown district, uh, has been told the, uh, the owners there, which Ryan Smith owns, that they'll give them two years so you can play, your team can play there for two years, but in the third year, you have, have to have a hockey specific arena. Yeah. So, and so that'll be good. Um, when you look at the, cause if, if I look at the failure of Arizona, the number one thing was they never really had stable ownership. And I think that's where Utah has the advantage right away. You, you know, he owns the jazz at like, is there any reason that people, you know, outside of Utah should be concerned about their ownership group as far as long-term stability? I can't think of any, you know, I grew up in Phoenix. I went to Arizona state right where they play uh, the mullet arena that you see right now with uh, the coyotes play. And uh, my my parents are gone now, but I still have two sisters there. And I love my sisters dearly, particularly in the winter when it's uh, beautiful down there. I don't love them as much in the summer because it's too hot. But the point being, I go down there a lot in the winter and uh, because we have snow here, as you know, and they don't in Phoenix. And so I'm aware of what's been going on there. And it really nothing has been stable. They've gone through so many rumors. You're going to have this happen. Well, you're going to get a new arena in this uh, municipality, that municipality. It's going to move to this city, to that city. And I think the fans down there, I feel bad for them, particularly the hardcore and those who may lose employment because you never want to do that but there's always been some upheaval around it. It was never like it was settled and this is who it's going to be. And I think that affects the team, the play on the ice too here. I'm not sure that's going to happen. I think they've got someone, as I said earlier, who was invested in this community through and through Larry Miller used to own the jazz and he's passed now. And the Miller family sold the jazz to Ryan Smith a few years back. And he was a local guy too. Did everything he could to promote the state of Utah. And that's exactly what you've got with Ryan Smith. He's got the wherewithal and the ability to pull this off, and he's got big time plans. He, whatever you can dream of, as far as whatever the highest level of those dreams are, that's where he is for this state. And he's on social media actively. He's just, I think just Saturday, you know, we had some nice weather today. It's all cloudy and rainy and stuff, and snow in the mountains. But this time of year can really be beautiful because we've got these majestic Wasatch Mountains and you can see the snow and it'll come down about halfway. And then it's 65, 70 degrees out in the valley, right? And you got these snow caps. I'm sure you're familiar with all that. And he points out, how did I get so lucky to uh, live here and be raised here and all that stuff? So with his backing and his success, I don't see it getting off the rail. I just see it starting and then growing. We are discussing the uh, new team, which uh, we're not sure, Patrick, when it's going to be official. What are you hearing? Like, is, is the announcement going to come later this week? Like, I've heard they'd love to get it done oh. and fishy announced before the playoffs begin. Uh, I would think Thursday. That's the, uh, everything we've heard. I've heard nothing that would indicate otherwise that this is a full speed go ahead, man. And uh, the, I think the Coyotes, are the, their season ends on Wednesday. And I think they'll start moving the folks up and away they go because off seasons are pretty short, as you guys know. And so they're going to have to get going here by October at the the very latest. Right. And so they've got, they've got a bunch of stuff that's going to be in the works. I would be stunned if it's not announced Thursday. Okay. Uh, What about the, like the minor hockey system in Utah? We've seen a lot of other cities that got a team and then how, 
the grassroots level has really grown. Uh, are there enough mm -hmm. arenas at the, at the grassroots level? Are you expecting that? Are they going to need more? Kind of give me a sense of what the uh, the minor hockey system looks like now, and you know what the potential growth will be, and and how much of a part is is the, is the franchise wanting to to help out in that regard? I'll compare that to sport of soccer here. We've got a major league soccer team, right? I mean, obviously, soccer in the United States is not as good as in other places. But, and they've had three owners now. And Ryan Smith, who owns the Jazz and will own the hockey team, he bought in uh, partial ownership into the soccer team here also. So this guy wants to rule the world, you know. And that stuff, they've put up academies, they put up fields, all those types of things to augment what they're doing and they got a nice thing going on. It's not the most popular sport by any stretch. I'm yeah. not going to be claiming that, uh, but there are a consistent group of people who are involved in it and really, really love it. They draw very well and they've got an Academy. So they've got one in Sandy, which is about 20 miles South of downtown. It's where the stadium is right next to that I-15 freeway that I told you about. Okay. That's where they play their games. Well, out on the West side, they've got an entire Academy and they've got a little stadium out there that they can see. I think it's a few thousand, right? When they first got here, they were playing at the University of Utah football stadium on turf, and it just wasn't true soccer. And they, and they found a field that they worked out on. It was really low budget. But now it's big time. I mean, they're doing things first class. And that's what they're going to do here. And it's going to take a bit. They're going to need to get going. But I've, heard, I've already heard some plans about spending literally hundreds of millions to get all that stuff taken care of. So I think that that's going to happen. You're going to have to give it a little time. But I don't think that when we look back 10, 15, 20 years from now, and maybe I'm looking through at rose-colored glasses because I live here, although I'm not from here. I've lived here for 30 years. I came here for employment. I think when we look back, we're going to say, yeah, that was the right move. This is a team that belongs here. There may be some you know, hard time a little bit here, uh, in the beginning, but not like when the Jazz first moved from New Orleans. There was a right. lot of hard times. Uh, but now, you know, they, they stunk this year, and they still had 18,000, 19,000 people at every game. I think that's what you're going to see. And, you know, we know we're starting to, from the sports radio perspective, we got to get up to speed with the Coyotes, and they'll change the name, I assume, because Phoenix will keep all that stuff. But whatever the name might be, we'll get up to date on it all and the draft choices and all that stuff. And, and the community become educated from A to Z. So I really have nothing but positive to say about it. And then what about the, uh, the Utah Grizzlies? How does this impact them? Yeah, um, you know, I'm not sure about that. I know that the baseball situation, they, the Millers who sold the, the Jazz to Ryan Smith, they came out last year and went to MLB and said, we want to be considered for an expansion team. And they've got a plot of land and everything. And we have, where I'm going with this, is that we have AAA baseball here for the uh, Angels. Los Angeles used to be California. I was not a kid, but now they're the Los Angeles Angels of Anaheim. I just call them the Angels, right? And so the Millers, they're intending to, they own that. They're intending well, I guess uh, Ryan Smith may own it now, but the Millers run it or something like that. I'm not really sure on that. But they intend to want to – I think it's the other way around. The Millers own it, but Ryan Smith's group owns it. But anyway, I'm getting bogged down. They intend to keep the AAA in town. And they're actually building a new AAA stadium on the west side. The stadium that they have has been uh, – it's just about a mile or two uh, south of downtown. But they own some development land out on the west side where close to where the soccer academy is and they intend to keep that so it'll be interesting to see because the the grizzlies play at the uh, it's called the maverick center now that's where they held the uh gold medal game for the olympics at that time to give you an idea it's about 10 12 000 seater so uh i think that that's what they're going to do there and so we'll have to see how it plays out I don't, I don't know exactly what's going to happen, but they got a nice little niche too. So maybe they want to go someplace else. So that wouldn't surprise me if that were to happen. And uh, what about a team name? Um, what's, do you have any gut instinct on what they might go with? Uh, well, Ryan Smith has talked about Yeti, which is some kind of animal. You look yep. it up. Oh, yeah. oh, I've seen it. That would be, yeah, that will be unique. I have been, I'm, I'm a loud mouth on the radio. Uh, and uh, on my morning show, I've been screaming something that's a little more Utah-centric, 
you know, where do you go? The most difficult ski run, what's it called? Black diamonds, right? Mm -hmm. So I've been going for a black, something, something like that. Black diamonds, uh, because they have an opportunity to start over and they're not. And, and as we understand it, the ownership of the other, uh, Arizona team is going to keep all that stuff. So they're not because of the opportunity then if they get their land to get the expansion team in four or five years, however that plays out, they want to just continue along those lines, right? And that makes sense, like the Cleveland Browns did with the NFL after they moved to, what was it, uh, Baltimore? Yeah. And I think they'll start everything new here. So uh, we shall see. Uh, I'm thinking that Ryan Smith put out, what, a couple of weeks ago? suggestions for names and so you can go look at his twitter which is now called x and see what all the people said so i would like to see something my own personal opinion that's unique to the area so i'm going to push black diamonds Ooh, the utah black diamonds interesting yeah. all right well it's uh, it's going to be a, an exciting next uh, few months uh, for everybody in the in the state of utah and in salt lake city uh, patrick i really appreciate your time Hey, thanks, guys. Appreciate you uh, having me on. That's uh, Patrick Kinahan joining us uh, from uh, KSL Sports in Salt Lake City. Um, Thursday, maybe official announcement. It's it's coming. Like there, I know nothing's official, but it's I, I don't see how they're walking it back at, at this point. So uh, the Edmonton Orders could be part of history on Wednesday night, the final game at Mullet Arena. I like. I remember like the final game in Winnipeg was pretty emotional. And keep in mind that the NHL in Winnipeg, the first time when they left, has been there less time than the NHL has been in Phoenix slash Arizona. Now they've moved to a few different arenas at that time, so that might make you feel a little bit different. But it's been there a long time, man. Since uh, 1997, 90, 96, 97. Now it's a long run. And so for those diehard fans, and I know, I know, oh, how many? It doesn't matter how many, right? And and think about the uh, the minor hockey system. And like if they never moved, if the NHL never went there, would Austin Matthews have played hockey? Like it's a valid question. You don't know, right? But kids see it. They want to play it. Look at lacrosse in Edmonton. When you had the rush and they became good, lots more kids. Ask anybody in the lacrosse community. Way more kids were playing. It's a fact that it, Kids see it. They want to try it. Mom, dad, can I play? All right. Then you try to do it. So there's still a negative impact. Make no mistake for, for the fans. It's not their fault that they had terrible ownership. Right? It's not their fault that, the, that they're not playing in a, in a proper facility. It's not the fans' fault. I never blame the fans. Quick break. We'll come back. Spec will join us next on The Gregor Show, presented by PlayAlberta.ca.
326. Welcome back. Gregor, Connor Halley with you in Sports 1440 live in the Ewell studio, E-W-E-L.ca for all your electrical needs. That's what you think when you think uh, electrical. Think Ewell. Edmonton Orders looking to add a little spark to their lineup tonight. Connor McDavid uh, is back in for the uh, Oilers and he is looking for his 100th assist of the season tonight would join Bobby Orr, Wayne Gretzky, and Mary Lemieux as the uh, only players to uh, do so. But uh, Nikita Kucherov also could uh, could join that tonight as uh, he has he enters the game with uh, 98 assists. So just a little bit, uh, eh, just right behind. So we'll uh, we'll see how that goes. So should be good. Uh, by the way, tonight's start about a 7:42 puck drop tonight in case you're uh, wondering so there you go let's get to the specker board brought to you by gs construction where a uh, man they are busy right now and they are hiring they're looking for some great people you got a good work ethic you want to get uh, some great benefits from a great company go to indeed.com and look up gs construction uh they have a, a few spots to fill on the roster as uh mark specter from uh roger sportsnet uh, joins us a little earlier than usual uh spec how you doing are you flying out to arizona I am flying Arizona. I got a flight in uh, about an hour or so, Jay. So thanks for fitting me in earlier in the show. Hey, no problem. You're jumping in. Uh, you're getting in on the uh, the history of Arizona in their final game, correct? Yeah, it's for sure. In fact, I'm so in on the history. I wrote their final game in Arizona in 2011. <laughs> I just read my column the other day. It was an awesome column. <laughs> I wrapped it up nicely, talked about the franchise, how they're moving away. They're never coming back. And here we are, 13 years later, or what? Yeah, 13 yeah. years later, coming down and write the same damn column all over again. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe I'll get it right this time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is funny. Yeah. Oh, was, that, was that when Moe's was the uh, was the owner? Yeah, they played. Yeah. What happened was they, they, it was I was around doing first round series, and I ended up down there like in LA or something. And then they were playing Detroit in Game Four. They were going to get swept. Mm -hmm. And then they were moving for sure. Like they were moving, man. It was happening that summer. I think Balsilli was sniffing around. And I can't remember the details. But anyway, I went in there to game four and put a 3 0 mark on that club like you'd never read before. <laughs> and here we are coming down to do it again. So it should be fun. I'm looking forward to seeing the Oil play the last game in that tiny little band box for an nhl team anyway well it's a great place to watch a game i'll tell you that it's unreal sight lines you're right on top of the game so that part's good um the uh, the orders tonight taking on uh, the last place san jose sharks uh, the sharks have secured that they have the best chance to uh, win the uh, macklin celebrini draft lottery at 25.5 percent uh, they can't uh, even if they win their final two games they're not get any better um they've only won eight games on the road but their last two uh, are have been victories in st louis and Seattle. The orders will get Connor McDavid back tonight, Spec. And um, I don't believe that the Oilers view his 100 assists in the same vein. Did you hear Sheldon Keefe? Oh, it's a distraction for our team. He was talking about Austin Matthews' 70 goal hunt. I'm like, are you joking that it's a distraction to your team? Like, give me a break. Your fans are loving it. Your team's playing well. You got a guy who's scoring for fun and it's a distraction? Like, give me a break. I don't see it. <laughs> like, that might have been one of the oddest comments I've seen from a coach in quite a while. Well, I could see it even if if, if the team was fighting for a place in the standings. Maybe, if, but they're not. If, right, they're not. If if they were if there was something to play for other than things like that, you know, obviously you're getting your game ready for the playoffs, but so's everybody. Big deal. So yeah, I read the same quote and I thought that was, you know, a distraction. I mean, I I mean he also said that he caught himself cheering for the guy to get the 70th goal, Matthews. So I kind of, I'm not sure it came out of his mouth the way he quite meant it, but yeah, um, yeah that was a strange statement. And, and, you know, as for McDavid, it's really amazing that the coincidence here that, you know, in the history of hockey, only three men have ever had a hundred assists. And I believe you could have two guys do it on the same night tonight. Couldn't you? Tampa, Tampa's playing tonight, aren't they? Tampa is playing tonight. Yes. So Kucherov has an hour and a half head start on, uh, on McDavid. <laughs> If you okay. if you if he wants to become the fourth guy first, so uh, we'll see. But yes, uh, it did happen once before. Nineteen eighty nine, Gretzky and Lemieux both had a uh, hundred assists uh, that season. Of course, two guys uh, prior to them, Bobby Orr. Now Gretzky had done it many times in his career, 
But, uh, you know, Bobby Orr, of course, was the first guy to get uh, 100 apples in a year. And now you have Kucherov, McDavid. And I know some people say, oh, that that lowers it. And I'm like, no, it doesn't. It, it just shows you how it's strange and it's odd. And yes, both guys are doing it one season, but because Kucherov's doing it or because McDavid's doing it, I don't think it, it weakens what the other guy's doing whatsoever. No, absolutely not. Like, again, who cares what the order is or what the sequence was or whatever. We're talking about five guys in the history of the National Hockey League that have done it. Like, I don't need to hear anything more than that, Jason. <laughs> right? There's a lot of guys getting a lot of assists and a lot of seasons so you're in that group of five that's a special special place to be it doesn't matter to me who else did it and when they did it yeah uh, mark specter joins us here on uh, sports <laughs> 1440 spec um you know no mcdavid on the weekend uh the orders of uh, overtime lost to arizona then they lose to vancouver's a tight game you know both teams seem to be pretty happy with how the game went you know it's a it's a 2-1 game with uh you know the vancouver wins on a deflection obviously they had an empty netter um you know I, I, it's not a game to get overly upset about if you're the Edmonton orders, but at the same time, it's one where I felt like, you know what, like their offense, they had some chances. They didn't bury them again. Yeah. They, they, you know, I thought I mean, Edmonton had more shots on net. Uh, did they have more high danger chances? I don't know. It was a really low event game. To be honest, Jay, there just there wasn't a ton going on. It was very well played defensively. Like everybody was really tight, and you know, scoring chances were hard to come by. And, yep. You know, how do they win it? They win it on a, a nice goal. The deflection goal was a nice goal. It's no question. Uh, and Lafferty comes down the wing and picks a corner. That's a real nice goal. So yeah, I would say to you that, you know, the, you, when a guy like when you have a guy like McDavid, I don't care what happens. You you do become a little dependent for him that straw to stir your drink. I mean, he's worth a goal and a half a game, right? It's a point and a half a game here. So, you know, I'm no, I'm positive that the Edmonton artists could learn to play without McDavid. They'd have to change the way they play and there'd have to be some guys take on different roles. But in the short term, you know, in the short term, like they scored five the first game without him, then they scored two, right? Then they scored one. Mm -hmm. So, you know, in the short term, losing McDavid... I'm not saying they're a one-man team because they're not. But in the short term, you do feel the pain of not having that guy that's good for, like I say, a goal and a half a game every single night, of every single season. Oh, God, yeah. Any any team, I think, long-term. Like, they did score five the first game, and so, you know, away you go. Uh, defensively, they didn't give up much, right? That's obviously what I think they're going to be. Uh, they're going to be pretty excited yeah. about. That's being kind of their go-to thing uh, with it. They didn't necessarily start cheating uh, defensively uh, whatsoever, yeah. but you know, now that, you know, San Jose is just not a very good team uh, whatsoever. This is the team the order should beat with their eyes closed. Let's be honest. Call a spade a spade. They're not very good. Now their top line though, Mikhail Granlin's, you know, their top line's actually been really good here down the stretch of the last six weeks for the Sharks. Granlin's a point of game player, you know, uh, Zetterlin and young Eklund have 18 and 17 points in 20 games. So, you know, you always have to respect the opponent spec, but man, tonight just, with Connor McDavid coming back, I think there's more juice in that room. Like this one smells like blowout to me all over. Well, and they haven't, they've had a couple games here now where they haven't scored much. And the power play, I believe, in McDavid's absence went one for six. Uh, so, you know, this, what do we know about this team? I mean, the hell, they've played 79 games. I think we've got a pretty good picture of them. You know, I think one of the things, Jay, that, that if I like about the Oilers is they, it's been a long time since they played three bad games in a row. You know, they don't, they lose one and they come right back at you. So I think that's points to a pretty good performance tonight. Uh, and I see a team whose power play, when it goes a few games sour, they tend to really bear down and start firing some pucks in. I have a sense tonight that that's going to be a focus of this team. They'll get a power play goal or two. And uh, I think they're good enough to defend San Jose all day long. You know, Michael Granlin's a good player, but on a good team, is he a third line center or a second line center? I'm not sure which. You know, they're oh man, San Jose, oh, though, yeah. man. If the Oilers play their game tonight, you're right. It should be fun for Oilers fans to watch. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I would think so. Um, <laughs> there's still the slight chance back the Oilers can finish first. I, I don't think they necessarily go after, yeah. but let's say Vancouver loses in Calgary tomorrow. All right, the orders win tonight. Then the orders win in Arizona. Now you go into the final game of the regular season. You're one point back of Vancouver. They're in Winnipeg. You're in Colorado. Do you rest the guys you can spec, or do you play for first place? 
Well, I think I'm going to get Broberg my his two games. Yes, but I think they're sure. going to give him. Yeah, I think they're going to give him that. And after that, who are we resting? Like after Broberg, that's the only sort of a guy I would call a minor league call up, right? I mean, Carrick and Ryan, they're both NHL players. Uh, am I missing somebody? Holloway, you know, Holloway's a good player. Uh, who's out tonight with McDavid back in? Uh, Kane's, Kane's out. Tonight. Yeah, he's Kane's banged out. Okay, so that makes room that Holloway gets to keep playing. You know, maybe by that last game, if everybody's healthy, now you do have to make a decision and you got to sit out an NHL player. We're calling Holloway an NHL player here. Uh, you know, that's when the coach and, you know, as the playoffs come here, there's some decisions to get made and it's their great decision. If my 13th forward is a guy that can be as good as Dylan Holloway or as good as, you know, who else is going to sit out of, of this group? Like they got 13 NHL forwards here. I'm not including, you know, the, like the Carrick Ryan thing, that's just going to go on and on and on. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about in their top nine, let's say this, let's say they got 10 top nine players. There's a guy that's got to sit out every night here that's not going to be happy about it. And it might, it's probably Dylan Holloway today, Jason. I think it's Dylan Holloway today if everyone's healthy. But if he gets in the lineup and has a couple of good games, the coach is going to start looking at a veteran guy and sitting him down. And that's when it's going to get a little spicy. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, I'm still not sold. Holloway is going to take somebody out of the lineup. We'll see. But uh, I'm not either. Yeah, I'm not either. Right. I, I'm not I, either. I think maybe afterwards, but you know, competition is a good problem. Like I, I think we're seeing it on the on the back end right now. Um, you know, you're you're seeing now the, the top four guys are still playing the most minutes, but the allocation of minutes has changed a bit. Not nearly as much as people are trying to to suggest online. I think there's been some hyperbole a lot. Uh, about it. Um, <laughs> no. If you actually, you know, because percentage of their ice time just skews the number. Just look at the actual ice time and uh, it is what it is. But I will say, I do know for a fact that, the, you know, Coffee challenged uh, specifically Nurse and Cece, but even his, his top four a little bit there um, after the Dallas game and they've responded, right? Cece and Nurse have been infinitely better here in the last five games. And you know, I was asked uh, on another program about, you know, what's the X factor for the orders to go deep in the playoffs? Like, I, I don't say, oh, yeah. McDavid's got to play well. Like, no, no, thanks, Sherlock. Like, I, yeah. to, to, <laughs> no, me, that. to me, I looked at it and I was like, honestly, I look at the CC nurse pairing because, you know, I expect Bouchard and Ekholm to play well. I expect Hyman and Drysaddle and, and McDavid to do their stuff. I would, I would look at the nurse CC pairing and then I would look at they need uh, Evander Kane to, to be an impact guy. He doesn't have to score all the time, he doesn't need 13 goals in 15 right. games. But those are kind of the X factors that I look at because every team, like I expect McKinnon's going to play well for Colorado. I expect McDavid's going to play yeah. well. You know what I mean? So I kind of remove those guys because if they don't, well, then I'm not even sure it matters what the other guys do. Nope, that's true. And remember the old hockey adage where the top guys can cancel each other out a little bit and it's the bottom guys that can win it for you. You know, not necessarily fourth lines always, but guys who aren't named McDavid and Drysaddle and Hyman are going to win some games for you. Kane's history, right? His history is he's a pretty good playoff player. You know, certainly his, his history in Edmonton, I've liked his work in playoffs. So, you know, if it changes, it changes. But I would, I don't know why you wouldn't be confident you get a decent run out of him. You tend to in the past. Um, I think, too, that, you know, there's always a bit of an unknown guy. Like in, on this team, you know, is it, is it a guy like Fogel that gets hot? Is it a guy like Holloway that becomes a better player that no one's expecting it from? You know, there, there's always, you know, what's the, the other one is the, the team that goes the furthest always talks about having a new hero every night. There's always some guy, you know, that we don't think about that scores a big goal for you, whether it's a Yan Mark or a Fogel or a, you know, a third line guy or a, a Kulak. Uh, so I'm not going to tell you I know who it is. I know who the suspects are, but one of those guys has to, we got to be talking about those guys into the second and third round, or there's there's a good chance they don't get into the second and third round. Yeah. Oh, 100%. Uh, I'd agree wholeheartedly. Spec, we'll let you get on the plane. Uh, we we look forward to hopefully a more accurate article this time uh, about the uh, about the Coyotes, and uh, we will chat with you from uh, Arizona tomorrow. All right, Sal. Thanks a lot. <laughs> Well, you brought it up. So there, there you go. That's uh, Mark Spector from the uh, Spec Report brought to you by GS Construction uh, 342. We've got a lot of text flying, man. Text lines hopping today. I like it. Uh, many, and hey, coming up uh, in the four o'clock hour, here comes the sun. First opportunity for you to qualify. We're going to have it one qualifier every day. 
right? And then that qualifier to, to be officially qualified, you get in, that's great. And then there's one thing you have to do. We've talked about it uh, before. Then you'll, you'll write the, uh, uh, you know, short paragraph, whatever, two sentences, it's your choice. That confirms your entry into the draw. And you could take home a $15,000 installed solar system on your home, or you could gift it to somebody courtesy of Action Electrical. Uh, all the rules are at jasongregor.com. If you uh, want to see it on the front page, this is, uh, whew, this is a massive package. And you know what? Uh, Blake did want me to big shout out to uh, uh, everybody at Legacy because they, from Legacy, where we did the Help Your Neighbor, and uh, they really kind of liked, you know, giving away a package and helping out in the community. And so uh, that's kind of what they're uh, they want to do as well. So uh, kudos to uh, Legacy to start in. It's a great trend. I love it. Giving back. It's great. Quick break. Uh, we'll return to the Gregor Show presented by PlayAlberta.ca. You can text us 833-401-1440 in our E-Well inbox.
Jason Greger, Connor Halley with you on Sports 1440, Orders Nation, uh, YouTube and Facebook. Uh, we're going to get uh, In the Room, brought to you by Next Gen Transportation, uh, heavy haul transport provider, 100% locally owned and operated, proud to be part of the My Shack group of companies and huge supporter of uh, many numerous youth sports teams in the uh, Edmonton area. Check it out at Next Gen Transportation. Dot com. We're going to hear from uh, head coach uh, Chris Knobloch in a in a second. Of course, uh, if you missed it, the uh, the big news today, of course, for the orders, uh, Connor McDavid will be uh, back in the lineup tonight. So uh, McDavid uh, missed a week, uh, three games, and uh, says he feels great. Is a uh, is ready to roll. They uh, you know, like he had mentioned, if those were playoff games on the weekend, he would have been playing. But uh, I don't know any player who gets worse uh, having an extra two or three days of rest, just like uh, very few young players have their careers upended because they spend a little bit more time in the American League, right? It's rare that it's going to come back. and Well, not rare. It's like name a player that's, oh, geez, spend an extra year in the American League. Well, clearly that lost all his talent. No, does not happen uh, whatsoever. So um, I look at the uh, at the orders and... And they're good. And uh, here's McDavid just talking about, um, you know, the process of making sure that uh, he's as close to 100% as he can be by the time the playoffs begin. So, well, yeah, I think it's a balance of everything, right? Um, you know, obviously balance of health, um, you know, balance of, uh, you know, making sure you're ready to go, making sure your game's where, where it needs to be. You know, going, you know, 20 plus days uh, between games is not really an option um, for me. So, um, good. Uh, yeah, what I'm here tonight. So there you go. Yeah, 20 plus games. What would it be 20? But man, like, trust me, McDavid hates not playing. Like hockey is his thing, man. He loves it. And uh, like literally despises not playing. Even though he knows it's the best thing for him right now, hates it. So uh, obviously uh, he is excited to uh, to get back. And um just the uh uh when you look at, you know, was there any benefit for him? Uh, in the games that he missed, uh, you know, is there is a little bit of rest? Like, is it a good thing at all in some way? Uh, this was not a, like, let's just sit out games just to sit out games. Obviously, there was something there. It was bugging me, and um, and I was sitting out to feel better. Um, this was not a matter of if it was playoffs or not or whatever. It was just, you know, thankfully, um, we clinched playoff spot, and, and um, you know, had something bugging me, and I and, uh, needed to get it right. Smart decision. Tonight, he'll play with the, the two H's, Henrique and Hyman. And uh, he talked about, you know, playing with two guys. Like, Norman doesn't play a lot with uh, Adam Henrique, but uh, he'll have him on his left wing tonight. Um, yeah, I think that's how we ended in Calgary. Um, you know, so, um, yeah, we played with three goals much, but, you know, really looking forward to it. Um, you know, he's been playing, playing really well, um, you know, and obviously high as he's high as he's. So, um, you know, I think it should, should go well interesting that that's what they ended with in uh in calgary and i'll say this uh chris knobloch and Nick mcdavid both were very open about the fact that people need to stop thinking that the orders are going to run four lines come playoff time now maybe, maybe they're both you know misleading us but i wouldn't think so knobloch has talked openly how he wants to have um time for his you know he likes duos for sure likes duos, but doesn't need to have a trio all the time. He will move guys around depending on the matchup, depending on how some guys are going, heck, depending on the time of game. We know that. Like, you look in the course of a game, how many different line combinations, even if his lines are staying close, coming out of, because we, we know what he does coming out of the penalty kill. And then we know what he does coming out of a power play. So he's he's done it now. He's, he's kind of showing you his playbook somewhat. Now playoffs are different. And you do have to adapt somewhat. Like against Vancouver, they Vancouver wanted Lindholm against dry subtle line, and basically, you know, they got it a lot. Now, if he wanted to, could he change that if they meet him in the playoffs and say, oh, you want Lindholm against McDavid? All right. Maybe not as easy as you like. So we'll see. But that's the game of cat and mouse in the playoffs that we just don't see in the, uh, in the regular season. Right. Um, I don't mind Henrik, uh, with, uh, he's a very smart player like Nugent Hopkins. 
Right? Like you can tell Nugent Hopkins is fighting it a little bit right now. All you got to do is look at how many times he's missing over the top of the net. Last year when he scored 100 points, he was hitting the net way more. You, he's trying out, and that's what happens to any player. But there's a guy who hasn't scored very much down the stretch and is just fighting it a little bit. And he's missing high more often than not. Not wide, but high. And that's what we saw two years ago with Nugent Hopkins. So you can that to me, that's a, a sign of a guy who's just, you know what, uh, his his confidence in his finishing, but come playoff time, that could all change. Right. So uh we'll see where it goes. But that's something I've noticed with Nugent Hopkins. I think uh Henrique, um, uh, while not as quick as Nugent Hopkins, he thinks the game very well. I think he's around the net a little bit more. Not that you need that because you have Hyman, but you know, when when Hyman's cycling it down low. I think you'll see uh, Henrique a little bit around the net more than you would from Nugent Hopkins. So they do have, um, you know, different attributes. Not necessarily better or worse, just different. So uh, look for that. Coming up after uh, 4 o'clock, Wanya Gretz will join us, Andy Petrillo. Also, uh, we will get our first qualifier for Here Comes the Sun. Man, this is an unreal package. Somebody's going to win $15,000 turnkey solar system for your home. What does turnkey mean? Well, that means right, they, you know, there's a site assessment. They set up the structural engineering permitting cost and supply and the installation of a solar system on your home. Now, there's a few things you need. You have to be a homeowner. You have to reside within uh, 50 kilometers of uh, Edmonton. Uh, also, you need newer shingles, 12 years or newer, which that doesn't sound that new, but trust me, you don't want 30-year-old shingles because you'll have to replace them uh, before you put this on. So I guess we can say, hey, if you win and you have old shingles, well, then you replace your shingles first, then you can get it put on. But they don't like putting on a home like that because then you're going to have to take it all off to replace your shingles in a very short period of time. So it, it's not it's not feasible. It's not the best plan for you. So 355, Jason Greger, Connor Halley uh, with you. Hey, boys, how much stock do you put in momentum? Like hitting the playoffs with a winning streak? Nah, not a whole bunch. I, I think it's more so, you know, how you're playing overall and how's your team been for many months? Right? Like if you if you lose your final two games of the season, does it matter? No. I think Colorado, when they won in 2022, I think they lost four of their last five games. Right? I, I don't think it matters that much. Heck, the Orders won, what, 17 of 18 last year? They didn't win the Cup. So the playoffs are a completely different beast. You're playing the same team for two weeks straight. And you're playing all you're playing one of the top 16 teams in the league. There's no games against San Jose. There's no games against Arizona. Right? It's all games against... LA or Vegas or Nashville for one round. Then it's going to be all games against, you know, maybe Vancouver or LA or Vegas in round two. Right. That's just how it's going to be. You, you don't get uh, those, those kind of easier games. So it makes it way, way more challenging and way more exciting. No question about it. Let's get to the uh, con man and uh, a sports 1440 update brought to you by. BIE Engineering, specialize in all your residential, commercial, and industrial structural engineering needs. Go to BIEENG.com. This is a sports 1440 update. Game day, Oilers taking on the San Jose Sharks down at Rogers Place. Puck drop just after 6.30. Connor McDavid back in the lineup for the Oil. Elsewhere around the NHL, you got the Red Wings hosting the Habs. Sabres in Tampa. Devils take on the Islanders. Reds in Pittsburgh. Caps host the Bruins. Rangers taking on the Sens and the Wilds head to Los Angeles. Off the ice today, Florida Panthers making a move promoting Bill Zito to the president of hockey operations on top of his general manager duties. The promotion coming with a multi-year contract extension. Terms not revealed. Major League Baseball Blue Jays will kick off a series up against the New York Yankees tonight starting just after 5 o'clock. Team also announcing that catcher Danny Jansen has been activated from the 10-day injured list he missed time with a fractured bone in his wrist going back to March. Elsewhere in the majors, the Rockies are in Philadelphia. Marlins host the Giants. Angels in Tampa. White Sox host the Royals. Padres travel to Milwaukee. Diamondbacks host the Cubs. You got the Reds in Seattle and the Dodgers hosting the Nationals. One final from earlier today. Red Sox falling at home to the Guardians. 6 nothing. And it's game three as Everett hosts Portland tonight. Winterhawks currently leading that series. Two games to none. Puck dropping that one just after 8 o'clock. And the WNBA draft Going tonight live from Brooklyn, the Indiana Fever holding the number one overall pick with Caitlin Clark almost a lock to go number one overall. That'll start in just over an hour. Coming up in hour number three of the Jason Greger Show, we will be joined by Oilers Nation, Juan Yegreth, also Andy Petrillo from CBC Sports. 
I'm Connor Halley. This has been a Sports 1440 Update. The Gregor Show presented by PlayAlberta.ca, where you can get in the game and lots of uh, you know, player props if you want. McDavid back in the uh, game tonight. Thinking assist is there happening for uh, 97 to uh, join the 100 assist club? What about Nikita Kucherov? He needs two apples to get there. You can get on uh, player props. You can get on uh, game. Hey, you want to just play the casino? Check it out at PlayAlberta.ca.
Ca. Also, you can get your uh, tickets in advance for uh, Lotto Max. And uh, the Max Millions, it's uh, $70 million tomorrow night and 10 Max Millions to play Alberta.ca. I'm Jason Greger. He is Connor Halley. We uh, welcome in from uh, Oilers Nation, uh, Wanye Gratzka in on a, a game day, the final week of the uh, the regular season. Um, sporting your uh, neon uh, Dallas Stars colors today. Nice. <clears throat> nice, sir. That yeah. is the Mexican national goalies soccer jersey. Really? Yes. Oh, nice. All right. Okay. So... Is that like a game worn one? No, but I wouldn't be yeah. caught dead wearing Dallas Stars no. uh, memorabilia. But I do like the honestly, but I like green. Like the Stars neon jerseys are awesome. They like, look good. Like they do. Like honestly, I'm like that's the one jersey I've seen. They said, you know what? Because the only jerseys I own are uh, that their NHL jerseys are the ones that my nephew has. Um, but that's one where I'm like, I would buy the Stars jersey just for that. Like I think it's unreal. I'm like that's a cool looking jersey. But I would almost like to get like a. Like a hoodie or something in the same thing. Do they make uh, apparel with that color other than the jersey? I don't know. They should. I have to look it up. It's a really good question. Any Stars fans out there, tell me. Because they should. Because that would be a killer. I watched a documentary, Gregor, the other night on the Hartford Whalers on YouTube. Oh, the yeah. amount they played the Brass Bonanza. I know that is the Gregor song, right? Oh, yeah. So as I was watching the documentary, I was like, dang, this is crazy. First of all, it's a wild story. The story of the Hartford Whalers. And second, their graphic design. It's unbelievable. It's just it? unbelievable. And I like know. their green is the greeniest. Yeah. And I can't explain how that works, but you know what I mean? Yes. No, they're green. Like when they went to their blue, it was like the worst change ever. They just sort of kept their green and their white. They didn't need, like it was the greatest one ever. And I know that teams are always looking at ways to get, I'm like, no, 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 no. Just stick with what you got. Cause they went to the blue and nah, it was terrible, but the green is still unreal. It's iconic. It's the, like, it's so funny how many people like, I didn't even notice the H in it. And I'm like, what? Like, how do you not notice that? And it was a contest or something. They were saying yes. in the documentary. Mm -hmm. That's wild. Yeah, I know. That is crazy. But you look at nowadays, and there's so many people out there that are ultra talented with stuff. Like, if you put it out there, I think you could have some some young guy, old guy, who could get on something that could come up with some very unique design. But it, it's so simple in a way, but yet so great that you instill the H inside the whale tail. It's outstanding. The B Sabres, their new blue is very blue. I don't know how to explain that, but like the actual Pantone, they've done a really good job of finding the blueiest blue ever in Buffalo. Yeah, that one's not bad either. So I, I like it. So uh, you got the Mexican um, goalie jersey. Going yeah, on, yeah, right? yeah. Huh. Love Team Mexico. Don't press me for any further detail. Yeah, well, I, I know you. You actually went to Mexico for a while, a long back time. when you because when you went to, I used to call it. You went to like Nerd Camp uh, yeah. down in uh, in SoCal. Yeah. Uh, when you went for uh, like a four month. Uh, uh, internet was I don't even know. like what was a class called it was like an internet camp type yeah, of thing basically yeah. like yeah. learn how to code and stuff well it was like if you already had an internet company that had done something they would go down there and teach you how to take it to the next level okay type yeah, thing yeah. right and then you met some guys from Mexico and then you went and like toured around Mexico so that's why you bought the uh, the Mac did you get that as a gift when you went to Mexico no like I had an apartment down there and everything I'm legit oh. I had this was I got in Mexico City because I wanted to look cool and fit in with my local chums you see but, Isn't uh, it pretty hot to wear a long sleeve though? In Mexico, Mexico City's cold. It's up in the mountains. What? Yeah, Mexico City's not hot. It's in really. It's inland and up high. Huh, things I learned today on April fifteenth that Mexico City isn't that hot. Now, like never hot. Well, like it's not winter, but it's like twenty degrees most of the time. Really? Yeah. If you ever hmm. want to go to a city, Gregor, yeah, that is going to blow your mind. I assure you, you will love Mexico City. I, I assure you. Like I had a place there. It's not that scary. It's an unbelievable place. There's like a few neighborhoods there. Like that, any like any bigger city is going to have some neighborhoods that you would like to. This avoid. is like a twenty million person city though. Like oh, the, I know the it's vibe, massive. Yeah, the yeah. Vibe so there's probably more than two. There's probably a few. But like, there's all economic realms in Mexico City, and everything down there is really cool. And if you show up at a party wearing the goalie jersey, you get a lot of street cred. Oh, all right, okay. I didn't know that. Well, that makes sense. Um, uh, Connor McDavid comes uh, back tonight. The uh, the Oilers, um, l hypothetically, Vancouver loses tomorrow. Oilers win tonight. The Oilers win in Arizona. So now you go into the final day of the regular season. The Oilers would be one point back of Vancouver. They're playing in Winnipeg. Edmonton's in Colorado. Would you dress your lineup to win, or do you care about finishing first? Do you think it matters to the organization? I do not think it matters. Do you think it matters? 
not really. But for people who say, well, it's good they lost to avoid Nashville, I'm like, that take I don't agree with whatsoever. Why would the orders be fearful of Nashville? If you're fearful of Nashville, you got much bigger problems. And that's no offense on Nashville. But you're fearful of LA, you got bigger problems. If you're fearful of Vegas, you got bigger problems. And you're not you're not going to win the Stanley Cup if you don't think you can beat those teams. Because the truth is, you want to win the Cup, you're going to have to beat some good teams. And so I don't care if it's Vegas or Nashville or LA. Like I know that Vegas won last year. That's irrelevant to me. That has nothing to do with how they've played for the last three months. And even if they get old Mark Stone perfectly healed up, that that's just an instant change everything for the way they've been playing for three months, right? Like history tells us that. And now, at the same time, would I love to see uh, Dallas play Vegas? Yeah, I would. I didn't want to bring up Mark Stone because last time I brought him up, you yelled at me and said it's impossible to fake a spleen well, laceration. He, I, don't be, I don't discount that the injury was legit. All I'm saying is the timeline, he clearly could have played this week. Okay. It's the timeline of it. Now, they didn't break any rules. So nothing's fishy? No, his, no the only thing that's fishy is, is the timeline of when he returns. Because they're not going to sit him out for seven weeks when their team's floundering, right? They wouldn't do it. No team's doing that. Plus, no player in the history that I know is like, you know what, I'm not injured, but I'll sit out. Like, listen to Connor McDavid. He had to sit out for three games, and he was like spitting fire. Right? Like, you're not going to convince one of your best players to be like, oh, I'm going to go sit out, and I got this little tweak here, and uh, I'll wait, right? Um, I Could he have played last week? Maybe. I don't know that. But it raises the question because if he's mad, so he couldn't play Wednesday or Thursday. Well, in Vegas, I think their last game is Thursday. So he couldn't play Thursday. But now they start the playoffs on Saturday and magically two days later he can play when there's no salary cap? Like, come on. That's the part of it that is... Uh, um, and for Vegas to act as though, no, no, no. I'm like, dude, stop it. But I don't blame them because the rule that they are, there's nothing illegal or wrong about what they're doing. It's not their rule that says there's no salary cap in the playoffs. And so the easiest way around this is the NHL just says, guess what? You know, do whatever you want with it. But when the playoffs begin, your game day 20-man roster needs to fit under the salary cap. Now, that means Noah Hannafin is a $1.4 million cap hit because that's when you acquire the player, whatever's left owing on his cap hit for that year, that's what your cap hit counts for guys like that because that's how you're able to acquire him. Right? He's not a $6 million cap hit, what his, his total number is. right? So that's why I see people, and then when they're totally, well, they have this much over. No, they don't. He's a $1.4 million cap hit. That's when you acquired him. That's all he had left owing. So that's what, you, that's what you inherit. So if you do that, I'd have no issue with it. And it's an easy solution. It's an easy solution. The conspiracy theorists on the internet still, they, when, they, when they saw Stone was coming back, they got quite worked up, I'll tell you that. Oh, sure. Yeah. But they're, they're also, they get worked up about anything, man. Like I've honestly, like I've really, I just mute the idiots now. It's just, cause you know what? Like if you read something and you feel like, God, I'm, I feel less intelligent after reading it, I'm out. Right. Now everybody gets one or two or three of those, but when it becomes a regular occurrence, it's like, I'm out. It's like anti-vaxxers. I'm like, I'm sorry. I'm trusting science, not Joe in his basement. I'm out. Like live your life, feel what you want, but I'm muting you. Cause I don't want to, I don't need to listen to the stupidity anymore. Have you found using X.com now is their X, whatever we call it, is different since you, since Elon took over? Do you find what no. you read and what well, you see hasn't no, changed? The, the only thing that's different is you get all these bots that are like, hey, uh, nudes in my photos. That's the only one, right? I, I find when I log in, the first like 100 tweets used to be people that I followed. Yeah, but, are, now, you, but are you on the one for you or the one that's following? Because at the top, there's two yeah, options. Yeah. So if you get on the one that's you, then it's only the people you follow. But when you just go to your general feed, like when you click on the top left icon, you just read your general feed now. When you first log in, a yeah, lot but, of it's like uh, these viral videos of people you don't even follow bombarding oh, but you. But see, that's why I only click on the following one. They're never like yeah. the for you. I never use that one because that's not for me. It's a bunch of people that I don't even know. So I never click on that. But one. your experience having what, 100,000 followers on X is a very different experience than like the normal. Okay, but even for, for somebody who doesn't have that many followers, like if you go on the one that says following, then it's only going to come up the people that you're following, is it not? Yeah, but like if you say something on Twitter, like how many people will reply? Like 200? No, I don't know. I don't but like count. normal people, if you'd go on, you're not going to have that much for you content is all I'm saying. Like replies and that. No, no, no. But the for you isn't people that reply to me. The for you is a bunch of people I don't even follow. Oh, that's what the for you is, right? Like it has people that they think you should follow, but I'm like, I don't want to follow them. Otherwise, I would be clicking the follow button. Right? It's like someone saying, hey, you know what? You and Dave over there, you guys should talk and be friends. 
I'm like, no. Like, if I ran into Dave and maybe we become friends, great. But no, I don't need to. the for you button on there is terrible. Just like it is on threads. It's awful. You don't like threads? Oh, it's brutal. Really? My my all threads is is people whining and complaining about stuff. Well, that's social media. Yeah. Well, but it, the best part about it is it's all the people who left because they didn't like the right wingers. So now it's just the left winger whiners. So well, when I go into Twitter, I get like bombarded with UFO videos that I, are things I don't follow. And I'm like, oh, these are phenomenal examples of how UFOs are real. And it's been like 10 minutes and I haven't looked at anything or there's nation related because I'm too busy looking at UFO footage. Mm. That's how I know Twitter has sucked me into its algorithm. Oh, well, there you go. Yeah. So mm, I'm not into uh, to aliens at all. UFOs and power plays. Yeah. Well, the orders power play uh, would like to get going for sure here uh, down the stretch. Um, we do have lots of text people wondering about uh, who's playing or I can All I know tonight is Kane's out and Ryan's out and Stetcher's out. Uh, Broberg is going to join them in Arizona. I would expect them to play both games Wednesday and Thursday. As for, they could even recall another forward. I'm pretty sure they have the cap space to do it for two days, right? Like you recall them on the two, Wednesday. It literally counts two days on your cap. That's it. So, and if anybody's just joining us and you're not sure how the cap, cap works it's based on a 192 day season this year so philip broberg is 863,333 dollars that's his cap hit so then you divide that by 192 which comes out to for two days for him counting against the cap would be uh 8,993 dollars Right. So they have the room to do that. So I'm pretty sure they have room if they wanted to add another forward to bring up. They could if they want to rest a few more guys. But right now they will have two extra forwards. And by Wednesday, they'll have two extra defensemen. So they could sit out Echo and Bouchard, for instance, in the same game if they wanted to. And then sit out Nurse and Cece if they wanted to. They could sit out McDavid and Dry Settle one night and Hyman and Nugent Hopkins the other night if they so choose. So. That's kind of where they're at uh, on that option. Um, I know people wondering, will, will Jack Campbell be recalled? I'd be surprised. I, I don't see the need at this point. Calvin Pickard has played very well when he gets in there. And I think if Stuart Skinner got injured, they would go to Pickard first. And then Campbell would come up and be the backup. And you know what? I guess if Pickard really struggled, then maybe he'd get a look. But I think... Now, worst case scenario, Skinner gets injured. I think they're going to go with Pickard. That's uh, that's the sense I get. I don't see uh, any uh, any reason uh, why you wouldn't uh, at all. So uh, so there you go. Hey guys, just because they have room, shouldn't they uh, save it for the bonus over just for next year? From Jeff. Well, uh, Jeff, uh, no, because the orders were actually in LTIR earlier this season with McLeod and um, Holloway and someone else. So right now, any of the bonus overages they have are going to count towards next season anyway. So they haven't, they're not saying, like, I think it might be a max of maybe 20 grand that you could put forth this year, which no offense is not really taking away nothing. So um, no, there's uh, there's really nothing that's going to benefit them that they're going to be able to put the, uh, the Brown and the Perry bonuses. It's basically like they're going to have, 3.55 or 3.6 million in bonus overages next year. It's not going to be ideal, but you can worry about that next year. We have all summer to complain about the salary cap, but uh, that's how it's going to be uh, for next year. So uh, we'll see where it goes. Uh, 417 on uh, Sports 1440. Uh, Andy Petrillo will uh, join us. And then uh, after Andy, at the end of her segment, we will do our first qualifier to get in for Here Comes the Sun where you will win a solar system for your home valued up to $15,000. Courtesy of Action Electrical includes site assessment, structural engineering and permitting costs, and then, of course, the supply and installation of a solar system on your home. Pretty sweet deal. So that's coming up uh, here in the next 20 minutes on the Jason Greger Show, presented by PlayAlberta.ca. Live on Orders Nation YouTube, Facebook, and Sports 1440. Your love for strawberries is very passionate, you say. Just wait till you get your next taste of Booster Juice. The new Strawberry Blush Smoothie may...
Loving it on a Monday afternoon. How are you? This is the final week of the regular season of the National Hockey League. Playoffs are right around the corner. NBA playoffs are right around the corner. Just have the Masters. Just have the Women's uh, World Championship. A great game, by the way, Canada, U.S. Woo! Danielle Serdakne right from here. Big overtime winner. Woo! Thrilled that would be for the old Serdakne family. I like it. Obviously, has mom's hands. So that's pretty obvious. Um, so, yeah, that was... Uh, Great weekend. Uh, I still, I would love to see the Women's World Championship have a best of three for their final. Just, just putting it out there. Probably because, you know what? Uh, they always say, but, you know, things when you saw when you were younger that lives with you and you kind of always revert back to that. Some of your best or most favorite music and movies come from a certain age. Well, the uh, 87 Canada Cup, the best of three. I loved it. So, you know, selfishly, I would like to have seen, like, imagine if Canada and US was playing again tonight. Whoa, it'd be awesome. Uh, let's get to the uh, footy report brought to you by Legacy Heating and Cooling. Home to no payments, no interest for one full year on your AC unit or your furnace or bundle them and save even more right now at LegacyHeating.ca. As uh, Andy Petrillo from uh, CBC Sports and uh, One Soccer joins us uh, once again. Uh, Andy, how you doing? Fantastic. How are you? I'm good. Andy, did you just dye your hair? Well... I did. Um, cause right. that, we pay that, attention on the show. We pay attention on the show. Yeah, yeah. The 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 fake brown stuff keeps growing in, so I've got to put the real blonde <laughs> stuff back in. But the big thing, though, Jason, is I chopped it off. My uh, my hair was long. I was like yes. Eve in the Garden of Eden, where it was like covering oh. my body. And I went broop, right up to my shoulders. Really? So that's Oof. the big chop. Yeah. Was that like? Did you have to have a few glasses of wine before you do that? <laughs> Well, basically, it was like six months in the making. Okay. My friends, my family, my coworkers, everyone was sick and tired of me because I kept talking about it. I'm going to do what? it. I'm going to do it. I showed them photos. I did, you know, mm -hmm. so and then finally, I just I did it. All right. I gave it a choppy chop. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's good. Um, hey, um, <laughs> it's not kind of a choppy chop, but uh, in, in, in a sense, uh, Lampard came out and uh, gave him, he chopped himself out of the, uh, the head coach <laughs> running for Team Canada. Yeah, I don't know how I feel about this. So, you know, as we know, uh, now that they have a general secretary and Kevin Blue, they're they're actively searching for the new head coach for the men's national team. Mauro Biello is still the interim coach. And we know what, they want a big name. I'm sure they do. I'm sure fans would want a big name. Frank Lampard's a big name. But, Jason, his managerial record is bleh, horrible. So yeah. I get it from a big name perspective. But even his second stint at Chelsea wasn't really good. What did he have, like, one win, eight losses, two draws, even at Everton, uh, only 12 wins in 44 games. Like, it's just, he's not, he's not good. I don't like, I, I and I, it, you almost say that sheepishly because he was such a great player. He's a, you know, a name that we all know, even if you're a casual soccer fan, you're like, yeah, Frank Lampard heard that name, but he's just not a really good manager. So I like the idea that there was a big name in the mix. Um, but I'm kind of okay with Frank Lampard pulling himself out of it. Now, another big name, of course, is Jesse Marsh. Yeah. Uh, this is another big name people are talking about. Um, so we'll see how that goes. Uh, this is a guy whose name's floated around even when it comes to Canadian MLS gigs. Yeah. But I don't know. It's it's just, it's, it's really interesting. And something that's worth noting is that over the weekend, it was the opening weekend for the Canadian Premier League and Christian Jack, yeah. um, our CPL insider, came out and said that Cavalry's uh, head coach, so out in Calgary, Alberta, Tommy Wielden Jr., and Forge FC out in Hamilton, Ontario, Bobby Smyrniotis, these are two coaches who are being considered by Canada Soccer, as they should be, Jason. Yeah. This is why the CPL exists. It's for players, of course, but it's also for officials. It's for managers. It's for physical therapists, anybody. And then it's for your coaches to yeah. see them be able to move on to something else. So um, whether they get it or not, I don't know, but I, I Canada soccer has to be considering them because they're also just dynamite in the CPL. This is why you have domestic leagues. Yeah, it uh, it makes a lot of sense. Uh, Annie Petrillo joins us here on Sports 1440. Uh, so what about the big uh, CPL opening weekend? Um, mm -hmm. What are your takeaways, uh, teams you liked? Any players that stood out and... Um, you know, like the cavalry is it too early, but are they still the team to beat in your eyes? 
Well, I would say it's Forge because they opened the, they opened things up against Forge, their arch nemesis, and they lost. So I'll say like, it's it's great. So this is the first time the CPL is starting a season with no real changes. There's been some rule changes, you know, a little bit of tinkering here and there, but yeah. um, it's the same eight teams. The playoff format that they implemented last year is the same playoff format for this year. So it's kind of like they're calling it the year stability, right? Like we've actually everything that happened last year, just copy paste, put it in here, with the exception of. I do think we're going to see a little bit more parity. I think the off seasons were very busy for a lot of these teams. Um, if we're talking about who won the off season, that would be Atletico Ottawa. And they picked up their first win uh, against York United. All the teams to open up the weekend, all four teams ended in a win. So no draws. Uh, three of the four t uh, games had a come from behind win. Yeah, yeah. And for the first time ever, all four home teams won, which is ever? also ever. I mean, it's oh. only six seasons in the CPL, but for the first time ever, yeah. all four home teams won. And for Forge, the team out in Hamilton that has won four of the five titles, for the first time ever, they won the season opener. Can you believe they've lost or drawn? And oh. here they are. They, they they picked up a win. So, like, a, a little bit of just uh, seeing goals, seeing wins, instead of just, like, draw, draw, a little bit of, like, you know, chess matching going on, hesitancy. They went for it. And yeah. um, what really stood out to me was Vancouver, which was an expansion team last year, Vancouver FC. And then, you know, as one expects with expansion, te expansion teams, they finished last. They blew up for four goals against Valor, the team out in Winnipeg. So, I mean, we'll, we'll see if this, uh, if this team can keep up their goal scoring prowess. Uh, but it was that, that was from a team perspective. And then a big name player that's worth watching is Manny Aparicio. He played for Pacific last year. Okay. out west and now he's with ottawa and he came up big for them in that first game uh a goal and an assist in a game where they really needed someone to take over and he did so you know a lot of these teams are having new players that need to settle in and i would say that uh, ottawa looked uh, looked pretty good in that game one over in the mls andy toronto fc after coming out of the gate strong have lost three straight what do you think's going on out there oh same old i mean I know I've been beating this drum, Jason. I know you're laughing because you're, you're like, this is the thing. And I feel so your bad. Favorite like, team, Andy, your favorite team. <laughs> they're in my heart, Jason. I'm not going to lie. But like, here's the thing. It's like they came out of the gates flying because they had to. You know, these yeah. players, like they, they have their egos and they have their pride. They were embarrassed last year. They didn't like the way they performed. They wanted to make it up to the fan base. There's a whole new coaching staff. There's like, you know, a new injection of, of life, voices, different ideas, different, you know, playing, I guess, and formations in certain ways like that. But it's also still just the same players with the exceptions of like little tinkerings here and there. Yeah, you can't like injuries right out of the gate, right? With your Richie Larea, Sean Johnson, the number one goalkeeper missing some time. Um, but it just, it's a lot of the same. Insigne is now out. Um, so so the same old storylines are Insigne being injured, Bernadeschi not having a point man to get the ball to. Bernadeschi is not a goal scorer. So he needs somebody to get the ball to. So there's the same old story there. And the back line is once again decimated, right? Richie Larea was out the beginning of the year. Now Shane O'Neill is out with a with a hamstring. Long, who they just brought in to be this veteran presence, he picked up a red. He's going to miss the next game. But, like, that back line is now decimated. So it's unfortunate because I think there was a little bit of coming down to earth, right? Um, come out of the gates wanting to make up for last year, wanting to impress a new coach. But at the end of the day, it's the same personnel. So it's a lot of same-same for TFC, which is unfortunate right now. Andy Petrillo joins us on uh, Sports 1440. Uh, Andy, a few other things, uh, you know, around the, uh, the the soccer world. The uh, the She Believes Cup uh, wrapped up. Canada lost in the finals on penalty kicks. Now, penalty kicks were better, but, um, you know, when yeah. you think about their losses here, like, they got to get better on penalty kicks here heading into the Olympics. Like, they just, do they just got to go out and just start practicing more? What are you seeing uh, on their penalty kicks that's lacking? I actually had this great conversation with Bev Priestman about it because I said, you know, this is how you won the Olympics penalty yeah. kicks, but now it's like, it seems to kind of be this like arch nemesis now in these recent competitions. And you're right. It did get better. And there's all like, contrary to some popular belief where some people actually think it's just a crap shoot. Um, no. And yes, sure. The advantage is, is, is to the shooter, but there's a lot of strategy 
that goes behind it. So other than the goalkeepers, right, who really they are at the disadvantage, but oftentimes you'll see them, they'll have the names and they'll have like an L or an R next to a player's name on their water bottle because, you know, the goalkeeper will sit down with the goalkeeper coach. They study the kickers and where do they like to go? So that's where they try to do that. But the shooter, Bev Priestman said that, yeah, they've looked at all the analysis. So there's a greater chance of scoring if you wait five seconds or more after the whistle is blown. So do not kick right away because if you kick right away, yeah, if you kick right away when the whistle's blown, the goalkeeper's jacked, the goalkeeper's bouncing, ready to go. So you're giving the goalkeeper a chance to be reactive and Mm -hmm. use their athletic ability to their advantage. But if you wait five to seven seconds, the goalkeeper now is getting in their own head and suddenly they're like, ooh, what's happening here? So statistics show the longer you wait, the greater chance the shooter has of scoring. So they definitely take that into consideration. You'll notice a lot of the players use a very power stance, right? Kind of like the Superman stance, we'll call it. Um, Again, from a psychological perspective, that is supposed to give them confidence. The deep breathing, we all know that, to slow your heart rate down. Um, And then even in practice, Bev said that they work with the two two boys, mannequins, not actual boys, mannequins. And she said that when they shoot in practice, they have them both go left and right. So it's not about where, like, it's not about which side you shoot. It's It's about placement of the ball. Exactly. Not what side, but where. Put it out of the goalkeeper's reach at all all costs. So you're right. You saw that against the Americans in that final game. Goes to PKs. Drastically better. But the fact that it even got to PKs is also just annoying, Jason. They dominated the Americans in that first 45. They they couldn't finish. And then they could, and then the Americans came out, they hemmed the Canadians in for the first 11 minutes of that second half. And of course they end up going ahead to one, the Canadians with some latest, you know, heroics as well to tie it, but like finish them, finish them. And I just felt like the Americans had the ability to adjust in the second half better, which was just unfortunate. So, you know, the Canadians are hoping to have four more games, at least four more games before the Olympics. So Bev will, will have some time to work on some things. Uh, Andy, uh, you look, uh, going back, uh, you got Vancouver, uh, Toronto, uh, now Toronto's kind of what you expected, uh, Montreal, similar thing. What about, what about Vancouver? Where, where do you see them this year in MLS? I am on the Vancouver Whitecaps hype train. Uh, I think they're a strong team. I think they've retained a lot of their goal scores. I think they have shored things up defensively. I think Vandy Sartini is the man to lead them. They believe in him. They play for him. Uh, sure, they're coming off a loss on the weekend against the Galaxy, but I think Vanny Sartini was right. It, it, it's not to take away anything from L.A., but he's like, they didn't – it's not that they beat us. We let ourselves down defensively. They had, like, that two, three-minute lull, and that's all she wrote. So, you know, yes, they're coming off a loss, but they're still – they're going to be battling it out with L.A. for that top spot. Um, so they're right now sitting second in the standings. But if I can give just, like, a little bit of history, because I mentioned the name Jesse Marsh. Like it was, yep. it was a couple of years ago. It was back in 2021 when Vanny Sartini took over because Vancouver Whitecaps were absolutely embarrassed in the Canadian Championship by Pacific FC, a CPL team. It was the first time ever that a CPL side beat an MLS side in a two-leg affair to move on in the Canadian Championship. Yeah, Dos Santos, their coach at the time, ended up getting fired. Vanny Sartini took over. Vanny Sartini understood what that loss in the Canadian Championship meant. But people still weren't believing in him. And in fact, when he was given a two-year contract, I believe it was a few, maybe even just like a few days later, Jesse Marsh ended up leaving Leipzig. And the whole conversation was, will the Vancouver Whitecaps be kicking themselves for not waiting just a few more days because they could have had Jesse Marsh as their head coach as opposed to Vandy Sartini? Well, I think the timing of things saved them, if that was to be the case. Because retaining Vanny Sartini, I think, was one of the smartest moves they could have done. Obviously, you have to give management credit. They're bringing in the right players. They're gelling. Uh, But to me, I'm on this Vancouver hype train. And I am looking to see, as the Canadian Championship kicks off on April 23rd, I'm sure we'll talk more about that next week. Uh, Only Toronto FC has ever three-peated. In fact, there was one time where they won four in a row. That's the only time a team has uh, won three or more Canadian championships in a row. Can Vancouver Whitecaps repeat? I'm going to go and say yes. There's my early prediction for you. Vancouver Whitecaps, once again, going to be your Canadian champions. 
Awesome. I love it, Andy. Great stuff as mm. always. Uh, have yourself a fantastic uh, week. And uh, I know uh, we're going to do it uh, next Tuesday uh, instead of Monday just for uh, some travel stuff. Uh, we'll talk uh, soccer and uh, we might even mix in uh, your love of hockey as well. As yes. The, uh, ongoing. Okay. <laughs> All right. Awesome. Thanks, Andy. See ya. There you go. That's uh, Andy Petrillo joining us from uh, CBC Sports and uh, One Soccer brought to you by Legacy Heating and Cooling. So it is now our chance. First time. We're going to do this every day for the next month. We're going to have a qualifier, one of the biggest packages we've ever given away. You are going to get the uh, the turnkey solar system for your home, valued it to uh, up to $15,000, courtesy of our friends at Action Electrical. Now, this was, what does turnkey mean? Well, it includes the site assessment. So they come out, they assess the site, make sure everything's good, all the electrical. They do the structural engineering and permitting costs are included, the supply and installation of a solar system on your home. Now, what uh, what do you need? You need to be a homeowner, number one. Or you can gift it to a homeowner. You need to reside or that person you gift it to in, uh, within a 50-kilometer radius of Edmonton. You need newer shingles, 12 years or newer. Just because if you have a 20-year set, then you're going to have to replace them right away. It's, it's, you're going to hate it because then it's going to cost you a lot. So that's why, uh, that's why you do it this way. Okay. Uh, then once you qualify today, you're almost there. There'll be one final thing that uh, all of you qualifiers, uh, you'll have to send uh, an email uh, to me. And this just puts you in the draw so we know as to why you want it or if you want to gift it to somebody. Because remember, you can't. So you don't have to be a homeowner to qualify, but to win, you need to. So then if you're not a homeowner and you qualify, then you're going to have to gift it to someone. Okay? So keep that in mind. 833-401-1440. Today, for the first time, because uh, this is a, a pretty good package, uh, we're going to get, well, we'll have everybody involved in every day, but some days we'll make it a little bit harder. Today, it, uh, today it might be uh, somewhat simple. I think you probably know the answer to this. Okay. So include your name and the three players in NHL history who have 100 assists in an NHL season. 833-401-1440. We will give you five minutes. And at 445, we'll pick a random text winner. 833-401-1440. The three players, include your name, the three players who have 100 assists in an NHL season. Let's break down the McDonald's.
folks, welcome back. Whew. The con man is the uh, the uh, the random machine is uh, working in high gear to uh, pick out a random texter. As uh, many of you knew the correct answer, Bobby Orr, Marilyn Mew, Wayne Gretzky, the uh, first three players with 100 assists. Well, the reason I say first is because uh, Connor McDavid needs uh, one assist this week to uh, join that club, and also Nikita Kucherov needs two. He also could join the uh, Century Club of Assists in one season, which is crazy, crazy to think about. So uh, our, our contest, uh, our, our new contest is called Here Comes the Sun. Uh, huge, huge thank you to uh, Action Electrical. Uh, they're going to donate and uh, install to our winner uh, a brand new solar system for your home or you can donate it and nominate someone else. And then if your name's picked, they will win. They're going to get that. Uh, now that includes a, a site assessment. Then it includes all the structural engineering and permitting costs, the supply and installation of a solar system on your home. Uh, there's a few rules. You need to be a homeowner or the person you nominate. They need to own their own home, uh, reside within uh, 50 kilometers of the Edmonton area and have newer shingles 12 years or newer. And we just do that just because if you have two older, now I guess if you have 20 year old shingles, you want to change them first, then okay. But uh, they won't install it on a place that has older shingles like that just because, but then you want to replace your shingles. Gosh, you're way too much. You're going to have to take that off as well. Cause you usually have to update your system in 15 or 20 years. So, so there you go. This is a pretty awesome package from action electrical and uh, the con man has uh, spun in all the names. And the uh, winner today is Andrew. Andrew, you are in the draw, my man. How you doing? I'm doing well. How are you? No, oh, I'm excellent. Uh, nice. Is this going to be for you? Are you nominating someone? Do you know? I am going to be, I would nominate and I would either nominate my mom or my brother. I'm not sure yet. Uh, a little too early. A little too, too early. early. Oh, you got you to see who treats you well in the next month. All right. Okay. Well, that's good. Uh, we'll stay on the line. Connor's got to get all your information because you got to, to, to be finalized in this, you have to send an email into uh, action ourselves just to clarify everything that's good. So uh, stay on the line. Connor's going to get uh, your email. He can uh, tell you where to send it. And, uh, and everything like that. And then you will officially be in and uh, we will do the draw in uh, in May uh, afterwards once we get all of our qualifiers over the next month. So uh, congrats and uh, your brother or your mother, if you win, we'll be getting a brand new solar system uh, valued up to $15,000 courtesy of Action Electrical. Awesome. Thank you so much. Oh, there you go. It's, uh, it's that easy. Get good son or brother right there. I like it. So uh, we'll do that every day here on Sports 1440 for the next four weeks, courtesy of Action Electrical. Let's get to uh, five questions. First, uh, brought to you by our good friends at the uh, the Brick and the Brick.com, where right now it's the, uh, the final day of the Super Savings event that's going on. Uh, you get 20% off all home entertainment or fireplaces. You can save up to $1,200 on reclining sofas. Like you're going into playoff time. Oh, reclining sofa. Unreal. You get all hyped up. Maybe you have a little cat nap during intermission. Oh, those things are money. Love the recliner sofas. So good. Like I'm telling you, like, you know, you've reached dad mode when you're just like, oh, recliner sofa. You know, you start to watch the movie and you're out. Like it's, it's pretty much, you're not a father. If you haven't fallen asleep in your recliner. I don't think I only can qualify really to get your dad badge if you've never done that. Every father will tell you that. It's true. It's just like a, no, it's like your comfy blanket. Babies have their blanket. Dads have their recliner sofas. Just how it goes. Some of these new chairs have like refrigerated units oh, in them man. and your remote controllers oh. and Wi Fi. Like you don't have to get up, man. You just reach over the side. It's got a cooler in it. Yeah. Everything you need. Oh, I know. It's unreal. So it's, it's next level. Like friends and Joey Tribbiani, they weren't lying. Those things have been a game changer. Get to the questions, con man. It's time for five questions on the Jason Greger Show. All right, guys, let's get a bold prediction for tonight as the Oilers take it on the Sharks and a four prediction as well. I'll go uh, for two, Connor, and I am the head of the Connor Brown hype machine, and I'm going to put Connor Brown on the board for a goal tonight. All right. Um. Oh, I think Edmonton, uh, they'll have a little boost of energy with 97. Um. I think they uh, skate away to a 5-1 win. And uh, Adam Henrique has his first multi-goal game as an owner. 
Question two, uh, unreal race right now in the wild card in the Eastern Conference for that final spot. When it's all said and done, who do you have getting in in the eighth seed? Well, it's a good question, man. Um, Pittsburgh, Detroit, Washington, and I know the Flyers still have a chance, but I'm going to go with the Red Wings. They, they stubbed their toe here for a long time, but they had a massive win in Toronto. And uh, you got Patrick Kane, who I don't think there's anybody, well, maybe Crosby, but man, even then, Kane always scores big goals. So, or is in on him. So I'm going to go Detroit. I'm going to go with the Caps, Connor, because I'm not going to say I'm a fan of the Caps, but I'm a fan of Edmonton product Brian Sotheby, who works for the Caps. So I'm cheering for Suds by cheering for the Caps, but I don't cheer for the Caps. All right. I, I totally understand. Question number three uh, NHL likely move into Utah. I think when Vegas came into the league, we're fired up to go to games in Vegas. Seattle seemed like a cool place as well. When it comes to going to see a game in Salt Lake City, how high on the priority list is that for you? You haven't lived until you've gone to Salt Lake City. Like, did does John Stockton make mistakes, Connor? He does not. Salt Lake City must be a thrill. Huh. Yeah, that's a good question, Collins. Um, ugh. I always, man, would it be on the top of my list? Maybe not right away, but I think they're going to have a brand new facility. Um, uh, they got a lot of skiing there, so that's the one thing. I think people, I think skiers will combine skiing and a hockey trip. So uh, it's a it's a good winter uh, winter opportunity there. I I've been to Salt Lake once, but I didn't get to really tour around. But the the brief part I saw, I actually quite liked. So. No fun, Denver. Is that Salt Lake City? <laughs> uh, um. <laughs> No, well, yeah, my experience it was like I said, I didn't, uh, I didn't get to experience all of it. I, I think as younger people who maybe like to go for a party road trip, it's probably not going to be in the top of your list. But I think for for other things, it definitely will. Question number four: What did you guys think of the live golfers wearing their team gear at the Masters over the weekend? Oh, this is Connor's pet peeve. I, I love it. it. There's not many things that get Connor fired up, but I knew it when I saw him ramping about it. I was like, awesome. Um. Yeah, like, I don't know. It is, I guess you pay for your sponsor, right? They pay for it. So you're, you're like, that's what they get paid for. So I didn't have a huge uh, issue with it. Like what what was worse, that or Jason Day's pants on the first day? It's a fair question. He got asked to change his outfit because it was so terrible. <laughs> like, did you see them? Sweater too, wasn't it? Yeah, but it was more his pants, man. Like those oh. things, they're looking like you. You thought you were like... Uh, um, you Looking know, like me, yeah. Back in the, in your younger days, you're like, uh, you know, you're out there. Look at me, I'm dancing. You got the big pants on. Oh God, what's his name? You know uh, who I'm talking about? The camera pants. Yeah, no, the camera pants. Oh, MC Hammer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think it's lame. I think that like yeah. somewhere, Greg Norman sitting on a yacht having a good laugh though, watching the Masters and seeing the Live logo. He's like, <laughs> that's how the shark laughs. Final question for you guys: On this day in 1992, Jay Leno had his final Tonight Show appearance as the guest host before taking over for a pretty long run. Who is your favorite talk show host of all time? I just watched uh, Connor, or Connor Conan O'Brien eat wings, the wing <laughs> challenge on YouTube. I don't know if you saw this. Yeah. It is so funny. Mm -hmm. And it just reminded me how funny Conan O'Brien actually is. He's my favorite by far. Conan, you know what? I never, like, I never really watched late night talk shows ever in my life. Like, I don't know, like when I was out, just, I've been out lots during the week, so I was never home. Well, you were working and, at night, too, and, weren't you? Uh, yeah, well, that was when I was in my 30s, though. But in my 20s, you know what? I never really got into it. Uh, but I was working in the oil field, so you're going to bed. I wasn't staying up that late. But um, I've gotten into it now because you, you can watch them earlier. You record them, right? You can watch them the next day. Um, I quite like, like, Fallon's very talented. He's he's very upbeat and positive most of the time, so I like that. But Conan O'Brien, the more I've watched him, like, He's got like he's just he's got funny mannerisms that's different about him, right? So I'm probably still gonna go with my favorite is Fallon because I haven't watched enough of Conan, but the more I watch of Conan, the more I like him. Conan makes himself the butt of the joke. And I think a lot of the late night hosts they kind of make the other person they're interviewing the butt of the joke. And that's yeah, what well, I've always liked about Conan. Yeah, Fallon Fallon mocks himself quite a bit too. Yeah. Right? Yeah, fair so, enough. Yeah. Like I'll be honest, the one guy I never really liked was Jay Leno. I was never a Jay Leno fan. You ever like Letterman? He was okay. I didn't mind him, right? Um, but like Jay Leno, I was just like, I never got into the Jay Leno train. Yeah. yeah. Cons, what about you? Yeah, I liked Conan back in the day. His little 
three inch bees skit. I don't know if you ever remember that one, but uh, he he just had some really weird things like that. My parents were all about Leno, so I watched a lot of Leno growing up as well. Uh, but yeah, Conan probably probably top of the list for me. And then if you could count like Jerry Springer, I don't know if he counts as a talk show host, but a sick day was uh, not a complete day without watching a little oh. trash TV. Oh yeah, I guess, so yeah. I was thinking late nights. Yeah, we me too. Like, because if you're thinking like a daytime, like Phil Donahue, mm -hmm. right? Oprah, um, Ricky Lake, Sa oh yeah, Sally, Jesse, Raphael, right? I think I like that. Oprah was pretty good in her prime. Like you know, she had some uh, pretty. She talked about a lot of real good topics. I never really like Doctor Phil's spinoff show as much. What about the Kelly Clarkson show? Are you immune to today's popular entertainment? Kelly Clarkson has a show. Yeah, there. No, I did not know about it. All I know is all of a sudden on my Instagram feed, she's popping up. Hey, I've lost weight. I'm like, okay, that's kind of what I know. Kelly Clark. Oh, no, she got a show. She does big numbers. Oh, well, I'm sure she does. Whole new demo. She can very, she's a very talented singer. Very talented. Mm -hmm. And yeah. actually very nice. Yeah. In an interview, she's very like positive and up. Mm -hmm. But no, who was the other? Arsenio. I watched Arsenio for a while. Pretty funny. So, um, and like, like to me though, well, I guess they're on the desk. I just Saturday Night Live, the desk is still, I go back. I, that was, that to me is still the best. I know it's only once a week, but it's unreal. The desk, like just they're Weekend on the desk. Update. Oh God, it's yeah. so good. Like two guys right now are so funny. They write each other's jokes. Oh, yeah. And now maybe they don't know about it, which is if they don't, they're, if they do, they're unreal actors about it, but that's pretty funny. It, it's a way to disarm how you get offended by everything now. Oh, totally. Because they're yeah. not saying their own words, right? It's well, no, no, be... but he's the white guy making yeah. the kind of the racist jokes that the black guy's writing. You're like, see, we can get away with it. And reverse, though, too. Yes, totally. Yeah, it's funny. So, I like it. Hey, boys, I'm just tuning in, but did I hear correctly? You're giving away a solar system. That's unreal. From Doug. Yes, we are, Doug. $15,000 system, courtesy of Action Electrical. So, they'll do that uh, every day. Uh, different times of giveaway, but usually uh, somewhere between four and six o'clock uh, every day here on uh, the Jason Greger Show on Sports 1440. When we come back, uh, Kevin Woodley is going to join us. Uh, we'll hear from uh, Dan Rosanowski with the San Jose side of things as they, uh, hey, they're playing out the string. They, they literally got nothing to play for. They've wrapped up the uh, best odds for the draft lottery, although the draft lottery still hasn't been announced. What the hell is going on? How do you not announce the day of the draft lottery? But uh, they haven't announced. Supposedly going to be May 6th or 7th, but still no official day. And think about it. If you're San Jose or Anaheim or Chicago fans, you're like, hey, when's the draft lottery? Think about it, Oilers fans. You were there. You know. I was like, you're Stanley Cup. You're like, hey, can we show up today? Who's got the lucky socks? Do we have it in us? Can we do it? That could make a big difference. Just think about 2015. Where were you, Oilers fans? Think about where you were when they won the McDavid lottery. Now, I'm not saying, hey, Acton celebrating, no offense. Probably not Connor McDavid, but he could be a really good player. Here is the uh, the con man and a sports uh, 1440 update brought to you by Fountain Tire, where uh, right now at Fountain Tire, uh, being on the road together means getting a great deal on tires. You can save up to 25% off. It's a big deal, including Goodyear tires only until April 20th at Fountain Tire. This is a sports 1440 update. Game day. Connor McDavid making his return to the Oilers lineup as they host the San Jose Sharks. Pucked up just after 7.30 down at Rogers Place for pregame coverage. Keep it locked on the Oilers Nation YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter streams. Aaron Bordado's got pregame with Borzy starting at 6.30. Elsewhere around the NHL, Canadians are in Detroit. Lightning hosts the Sabres. Islanders taking on the Devils. The Penguins will host the Preds. Caps battle the Bruins. Rangers host the Sens and the Wild in Los Angeles. Major League Baseball, the Blue Jays kicking off a home series against the New York Yankees. That'll start in seven minutes. Right now, Twins trail the Orioles 2-1 in the second. Also in the second, it's scoreless between the Phillies, Rockies, Rangers and Tigers scoreless, Rays Angels also scoreless, and the Marlins lead the Giants 1-0. Still to come this evening, Mets host the Pirates, Royals are in Chicago to take on the White Sox, Brewers host the Padres, Cubs in the desert taking on the Diamondbacks, Mariners host the Reds, Dodgers meeting the Nationals. Earlier today was the Guardians blanking the Red Sox 6 0. And we've got playoff action in the dub Portland and Everett leading two games to none. That one's starting just after 8 o'clock. The Philadelphia Eagles locking up another key piece to their offense, signing wide receiver Vonde Smith to a three year, $75 million contract extension. And we're moments away from the WNBA draft out in Brooklyn. The Indiana Fever holding the number one overall pick, likely to take Caitlin Clark out of Iowa. 
Coming up in hour four of the Jason Greger Show, we will be joined by the voice of the San Jose Sharks, Dan Rosanowski, and Kevin Woodley from Ingle Magazine. I'm Connor Halley. This has been a Sports 1440 update. Sports 1440 in West Edmonton Mall and Wetaskiwin. CKJ. Welcome back, Jason Greger, Connor Halley. My name is with you on Sports 1440, Overs Nation uh, YouTube and Facebook. A busy day on the show. And hey, it could be a busy night for you at PlayAlberta.ca. Maybe you haven't tried it. You want to uh, check it out the first time. Maybe you don't like sports betting. Maybe you just like the uh, the slots. 
So you know what? You can use the uh, promo code CASINO50 and you'll get a free $50 wager for your first time use at Play Alberta. Dotsie, you can also get your tickets there. Lotto Max, 70 million bucks tomorrow. Woo! Like I've always said, if one of our listeners wins, you better throw a party for us. Okay, I think that's only fair. Why wouldn't you? Like, imagine the party you could throw, even if you just wanted to blow a lot of money. Because it would be hard to have a party. Like, how much could you blow in a night? Now, I guess maybe if you want to bring in, like, a Bruno Mars, I think they cost, like, a million bucks. Something like that. Didn't but, Rihanna just perform at a wedding in India and it was $8 million to have her come sing? Well, maybe her, sure. I'm not getting Rihanna at my party. I don't want her. If you won the lotto? Nah, she wouldn't be not. She wouldn't be my top five list of who I'd want to bring in. Would you have a, if I won a trillion dollars, a performer you would bring in for Rihanna type money? Well, I'd want someone who I think is a good performer that I'm like, hey, you know what? I think they'd probably be fun to have a beer with. Like Bruno Mars. I like his story. I like his background. Uh, or the weekend. I think the weekend's really talented singer. He's Canadian. I think he'd probably be a down to earth dude. So I'd probably go with one of those two. You think all that Bruno Mars stuff they're saying about gambling is just to promote the fact that he's in residency at the MGM? What do you think that is? I have no idea. You didn't see the story? No, I didn't. Oh, they were saying that Connor was at like fifty million dollars or some crazy thing that they say he gambled during his residency at MGM. And I was thinking about it to myself. I think every publicist now in Hollywood knows if you want any type of attention on your client, you need a fake scandal. And yeah. like his residency, I think he makes like thirty million dollars a year. No, yeah. but Jeez. so would you would bring in Bruno Mars though and his gambling addiction to come and entertain. Well, I, didn't know, I didn't know he had that. Would that change your plans? Mm, well, I don't know. I'm not gonna. I don't think I'm gonna be gambling, so I don't really care. But in theory, you've been gambling to win the money to have your Bruno Mars concert. Yeah, well, that's true. So I know I wouldn't. I'd feel like a hypocrite if I didn't bring him in. Bring him in. Yeah, be like, hey, Bruno. Like, I'm not really at the same level of you, but hey, you know, t what tips can you give me not to go down that path? Can or, I sit beside it, you and I'll do the yeah. opposite? Is it even true? That would be my question. I anyway, can't see it being true. No, let's go uh, around the NHL now. Brought to you by Mick Donalds and Oof. The uh, McCafe Brew is coming tomorrow for all of you uh, coffee drinking lovers. Smooth, satisfying, and irresistibly sippable. Try it with French vanilla or caramel cream starting tomorrow only at McDonald's. As uh, we welcome in a uh, longtime voice of the San Jose uh, Sharks, Dan uh, Rosanowski. Um, obviously, being a, a tough year for the Sharks, they're, they're in a rebuild. And really, if you're going to be in a rebuild, this is what you want. You want to give yourself the best odds to uh, win the lottery. They are at 25.5%. And uh, Dan, it's, you know, obviously it's been a, a tough season. You know, it gets worse when you got guys like Couture injured pretty much uh, for the most of the year and, and stuff like that. Kind of, if you look at it, the start of the year where they were, and I'm not sure they were completely in, but during the season, I think they've, like when they traded Hurdle and stuff, I think they finally committed, like, we're now in a full-on rebuild. Is that fair? I'd say it's fair. I'd say that the, the expectation was that they would be doing a little bit better than they were. And I think at the start of the year, they had hoped that they would still be in some conversations around the trade deadline time and not uh, talking about unloading necessarily, but, um, but that didn't work out. And that was part of the plan. If it doesn't work out, you've got assets to move. And uh, Tomas Hurdle was the, you know, the big name this season that, that moved on, but don't forget about Anthony Duclair too. They got some value back for him. And in fact, we're going to see some of that tonight as Jack Thompson makes his San Jose Sharks debut against the Edmonton Oilers here at Rogers Place. So um, we're going to start to see yet another young player with a good a bit of promise inserted into the lineup. And uh, that's something that they, they've been trying to get. They picked up Colin Graff in, in a free agency deal after his uh, season ended with Quinnipiac University. And uh, so that's another uh, addition to the puzzle. And of course, you know, you've got the prospect of what you just talked about now. Uh, the best chance to get the first overall pick. Although the Sharks have never had the first overall no. pick in the 33-year history of the team. So uh, let's not forget that. And let's not forget that, that, that it is a lottery that you have to win. Even though you have the best chance, you don't necessarily win it. Uh, we're hoping that all things uh, go along to the way of averages and that the Sharks get the first pick overall because um, Macklin Celebrini, who is considered the number one pick overall, is not only an outstanding player at the age of 17, which he still is now, if I'm not mistaken, he's turning 18. Yep. But uh, in addition to that, he's uh, he's a Bay Area kid in many respects. I know he was you know started out in the Vancouver region, but his dad is the uh, head of performance for the Golden State Warriors. He was a junior shark, and so this would be a big deal to to help the Sharks return to relevance among the 
among the uh, 32 teams in the league that where they haven't been the last year or two. You mentioned some of the young guys that are going to make their debut and, you know, it's obviously super exciting for them. And, uh, you know, Edmonton went through it a decade ago where you bring in young guys and everyone's, Oh yeah, I'm really excited about it. And, you know, the mistake they made was they brought in too many young guys and didn't really, you know, have any decent veterans around to kind of protect them. Um, where's Logan Couture at Dan? You have like, how concerned are they that his career might be over? Well, everybody's concerned if he can't play, obviously. And I don't think there's anybody that's more concerned than Logan Couture himself. He's somebody that's so passionate about this game. He's an outstanding captain. And that's all been missing this season. He played for the team for six games. And when he was in, he didn't score a goal, but he made it uh, in those six games. But he made a big difference. And I think that, that that's the hope that he can recover. This is just a weird thing that he's got and has had to deal with. And several other players have had to deal with it over the years. But um, the hope is that he can get back to full health next season and see where it goes. We know a thing or two about cheering for the draft up here. How are Sharks fans holding in for this tough season? I, I think that the Sharks fans have been very patient, and I think they've been very understanding with what's going on. Uh, you know, it's not like you you rebuild a franchise in, in two minutes. It takes a while to do it. And ultimately, you have to pay the price for being one of the best teams in the league for basically two decades. Uh, they never did win the Stanley Cup in that time, but they came close a number of times, probably could have, maybe even should have won it uh, at least three times in those uh, 20 years, but only went to the final and were two wins away from winning it against Pittsburgh in 2016. Yet, you know, even in 2019, the last year they made the playoffs, uh, they went to the conference final against St. Louis. And of course, uh, you saw what happened there. The Blues ended up winning in seven against Boston. And uh, so that's uh, that's something that fans have been patient with. Um, I, I know that, you know, you don't necessarily see as big crowds as, as we've seen normally. That does happen in the Bay Area for teams that that don't have winning records because of the competition for the entertainment dollar. I mean, we've seen the San Francisco Giants go through it, too, yeah. um, when you know when their team isn't on the top of the standings. So um, that's not totally unusual for the marketplace, but it, but it is a, it is a tough slog because. SAP Center needs to get ramped up in terms of the excitement again. And of course, if you get to the first pick overall and you have all of those local connections, and you have that ability of the, the young player and, and the great promise, that'll, that'll bring a lot of attention, as it did with Chicago last year when, uh, you know, when Connor Bedard went to that team. Oh, God, yeah. Um, now, overall, you know, how's Eklund? Uh, you know, his, his numbers here down the stretch, Dan, and, you know, he's got 17 points in, I think, his last 20 games. Uh, you know, playing with Grand who's having a hell of a year, by the way. But how how has he come along? Because he's he's probably like you know their best bet for a young prospect who they hope can become a player right now. I think you got two of them that are up front and they're playing on the same line. You've got William Eklund and you've got Fabian Zetterlund. You can't forget about him as a young guy that's still coming up and is early in his career. And he's got 22 goals and I I think took took a major step forward. And you know what? The, the, the common theme there is that they're both playing with Mikhail Granlin right now. You mentioned it. He's having a fantastic year. If he gets a point today, it'll, it'll extend a point scoring streak to 12 straight games, which would match his career best, which he established a few years ago before he became a Shark. And I think that just being around a player like that, Eklund is not the biggest guy in the world. And so he's got tremendous skills, good vision, uh, a nice head for the game, fantastic shot. All of that's in his favor. But he needs to be able to survive in the in the big man game of the NHL. And I think, you know, you look at Granlin, he's basically Gumby out there. He can bend in all sort of different ways. And he's very good at protecting the puck. He's very uh, smart defensively, uh, in addition to, you know, the prodigious offensive talents that he has. So I think that Eklund has learned a lot from that. So is Zetterlin. And I think that in Eklund's case, uh, he's taken a major step forward this season in his career. And it's really hard to to develop as everybody in Edmonton knows for, you know, for the years that, that they have rebuilt with top prospects. Um, it's, it's very difficult to rebuild at the NHL level. It's probably best if you get some time in the AHL and William did last year, but uh, that's, that's a, that's a difficult chore when you're, you know, you're paid to win. That's the name of the game in the NHL. And so uh, development sometimes takes a back seat and that's sort of the tightrope that, 
uh, teams like the Sharks are walking with uh, getting guys in maybe sometimes a little bit earlier than they would otherwise like. But uh, but they're trying to manage that as well as they can. Shakir uh, Mac um how, how did he look before his injury? Well, I think he's maybe the best defenseman talent wise in the Sharks organization right now. That's what I think. He's very, very solid. He does a lot of the little details very well for someone his age. I think the biggest difference for him, as opposed to, say, somebody like Colin Graff, who just arrived, or, or even William Eklund to that degree, is that uh, Shaq is, is just developing uh, an understanding of what North American hockey is all about. I know he spent some time in Utica. He's with the Barracuda. He, yes, he did get injured, but I think that, uh, that the whole language issue is, is something that, that he's been getting a lot better at during the course of this season. And I think that that's once that gets into place a little bit better, then uh, he's going to be able to even explode further forward. And I'm expecting a very solid NHL career from this guy. He's uh, he's very skilled. He's got a good stick. He's got nice size. He's rangy, can skate, does some things offensively. I, you know, uh, Craig Button told me last year when the Sharks picked him up from New Jersey that he thought he might have been the best player that wasn't in the NHL at the time. Mm. And I can see why he might have that impression. So, you know, this is somebody that has a very bright future. Um, we'll see how he is in terms of his training and his health and so forth. But uh, but he's somebody that's been uh, very, very good. And like I said, in terms of just sheer talent and ability, he's right at the top in terms of what the Sharks have. Uh, Dan, heading into tonight, you know, obviously there's not much play for. They've secured last place. Uh, there, there is the, 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 the streak. And they've actually won their last two road games, uh, having only eight uh, wins all season long. They go against an orders team who gets Connor McDavid back and he's going for a hundred assists. What's your expectations of the sharks? How, how have they, what's been their, their energy level uh, down the stretch when, when they really haven't had a lot that's to play been one for of the great, that's really been one of the great stories of the year, to be honest with you, because you look at the record and you look to, at where the team is. I'm, I'm comparing this since I've been here since day one with some other versions of the Sharks. And I remember this is kind of comparable in terms of their record, pretty close actually in the numbers, to 95-96. Mm-hmm. That particular year, the Sharks dismissed Kevin Constantine partway through the season. Jim Wiley uh, ended up coaching the team for the rest of the year, and they went 20-55-7. and seven. Well, where are they right now? They're at 19 wins, 52 losses, and 9 OTs, so they got 47 points. A similar kind of a year. Um, but I think that the difference this year is the job that David Quinn and the staff have done. And uh, to a degree also, even with this big team, the job that John McCarthy and his staff have done with the Barracuda in the AHL in making sure that these guys are all prepared when they get recalled, uh, that they play the same style of hockey, that they, that they work as hard as they can and make the most out of what they've got. And that's pretty much what they've done. They've been hard to play against in most areas. It's just the depth of the team that, uh, that really is hurt in some of those games. You know, you, you go into the third period, you, you, you know, last game against Minnesota, they were right in the game. Then they make a mistake. And usually what has happened is a mistake that, that's made is catastrophic. Okay. And that's been one of the problems that they've had to deal with. But as they, uh, they build up their, their pool, I think that's going to diminish. And, you know, you got to credit the coaching staff for doing a really good job in keeping these guys together, motivated, and enjoying each other. And I think that that's, you know, that's a part of it, too, that you can't underestimate the fact that these guys like each other. They work hard together. And, yeah, they're professionals, and some of them might have a, a different agenda as to where they end up next year. But while they're here with the Sharks, they, they wear the teal proudly. And I think you'll see that tonight. Dan, great stuff, man. Uh, enjoy the broadcast. Always good to talk to you. I appreciate it. We'll talk soon. There you go. That is uh, Dan Ruzanowski, longtime voice of the uh, San Jose Sharks. And had two decades of them being one of the best teams in the league. They had the most wins in the regular season, second most in the playoffs. Just unfortunately didn't get a Stanley Cup, but they were really good for a long time. And uh, unfortunately for the Sharks, they're going to be really bad. For uh, for a long time, they're uh, just starting it. This is their fifth year missing the playoffs. And this is kind of the first year they've committed to being a rebuild. So oh, they got a lot more time to go. Uh, Kevin Woodley talking goaltending. We can start to look a little bit. We don't know for sure who they're playing. We know they're playing this week, but L.A., Vegas, Nashville. You know about Saros, the Kings. I think everybody knows about it. So we'll we'll look at some goaltending battles next on the Gregor Show, presented by PlayAlberta.ca. Jason Gregor, Connor Halley, Wanya Gretz with you on Sports 1440 and Orders Nation YouTube and Facebook. Your love for strawberries is...
How are you, Jason Greger? Connor Halley, one day congrats with you on uh, Sports 1440, Orders Nation, uh, YouTube, and uh, Facebook. And uh, it is time now for the uh, goalie report brought to you by Booster Juice. Strawberry lovers, rejoice. The triumphant return of the strawberries and cream booster ball. A fan favorite combination of strawberries, cashews, vanilla, and coconut. Tasty. I tried one this morning. Booster juice. Very good. I love strawberries. So check it out only at Booster Juice as we uh, welcome back to the uh, program from uh, In Goal Magazine and NHL.com. Kevin Woodley joins us. Woodley, how are you, my man? Love me some Booster Juice, Jason. And that sounds like good stuff. Oh, buddy, it's great stuff. It's uh, awesome. Um, uh, give us the uh, the update. Let's go on Demko. Uh, he's going to go tomorrow. Well, so when you go to watch a guy who's been out that long, what are you watching for to see? You know how good he looks. Not just the goals against, but are there specific things you will look for in his game? Well, starting with practice over the last week, I've been looking for how he moves. Like somebody asked me, like saves he's making, like are you looking for big spectacular saves? And I'm not even looking for him to stop the puck. It's just how he moves. And his movement since he got back on the ice on Tuesday has been sharp, crisp, powerful. Like he looks like Thatcher Demko um, and, and like the best of Thatcher Demko. Next stage is um, how he manages traffic. He talked about it a little bit today. Like this is the test. I don't think there's any physical tests left for him, Jason. We, me and him have had a couple of conversations here outside of the scrums about where he's at. And when I watch him and when I talk to him, I don't think they're worried about that. This isn't like a, how do you feel? Is your body okay? Like, will those answers dictate whether you get into the next game? I think it's just, it's finding that little black puck when 10 bodies are flying around in front of you and being able to read the patterns of the offensive team and sort of put yourself in the right spots with all those movements to make saves and hopefully make them easily because you're beating pucks to save positions. So um, that's the one thing you can't sort of imitate in practice. And I know these last few practices they've tried to, as goalie coach Ian Clark would say, put them in the jungle, like, you know, yeah. everything dynamic and all those reads. But at the end of the day, you can't match the pace and intensity of an actual game. And that's what they're looking for here in the final two of the regular season. And I know everybody here is asking, Hey, like playoffs, that's only two games. That's not enough. Again, I would point to the regular season. Two games in the preseason, and they're off and running. He was the best goalie in the league for the first six weeks of the regular season, lapped the field. So I think that's what – I mean, is it ideal? Is that your your best-case scenario? Sure. But that's what they're hoping for, and I think there's at least some proof that he's been able to do it in the past. Yeah, you mentioned, though, I think the intrigue was how do you handle it in front? So when you come in the start of training camp, there's just not as much traffic early in the season. You get to the playoffs, Kevin, you know, pox to the net, pox to the net. No, crash the goalie, like garbage goals. Like it becomes even more of an emphasis. Now I could argue that maybe that's not the best strategy because it doesn't always work, but I do wonder if whoever plays them and it looks like it's Nashville, not hundred percent sure, but it's trending in that direction. Um, you know, the way they play, like, do you see it from, we've always talked about, you know, how a goalie plays behind his team. What about playing opposing teams? Are there some that are better matchups? Cause maybe some teams are less traffic oriented, right? Like some teams are really good on rebounds. Some teams are really good by having guys right around the net. Uh, do you ever look at it from a goalie's perspective on certain teams that might be better matchup for a guy like him or even yeah, other goalies? Yeah. You know, I, I do for sure. And full disclosure, like I haven't had a chance to dig into the potential matchups in part because they're not completely set. Let's see if Nashville yeah. beats or gets a point on the Pittsburgh tonight that I'm, I'm starting to look at them. Right. For sure. Um, I, I think a lot of it, Jason, is is off the rush or not off the rush. Like how you know how do you def how good are you against that, and how much does the other team generate it? Uh, you know, it's it, ironically because there is a lot of talk about Nashville and a lot of talk about Saros. I took a quick look this morning, and fair question about Demko. Although I think he handles traffic well, he looks up and over it at six foot four. Is really good at getting to his positions early, sort of forcing you to interfere with him versus okay. trying to push out into traffic. Uh, on the flip side, you know, I think you saw this a little bit in your series against Vancouver and we've seen it throughout the year. Like they're one of the best teams in the league at generating purposeful traffic layered screens, multiple levels as talk it talks about. Uh, and, and with a guy like Quinn Hughes at the back end, getting pucks through that. I mean, you hit the top two corners in the net blocker or glove through a layered screen this year in the NHL, it goes in over 40% of the time. Like that's how high quality a chance it is. Wow. Now, so it's not easy to do. There's a lot of bodies in between it. You got to hit those spots and get it through. But if you do, 
you're usually rewarded. Interestingly enough, on the flip side, Saros, a smaller goalie, one of the few numbers that he's, you know, struggled with this year is ironically screens and in particular layered screens. So as much as that focus might be on, you know, pucks to the net and crash Demko, um, because he's coming off an injury, I think th the reverse focus could be true as well if indeed it becomes the Nashville Predators against the Vancouver Canucks. Kevin Woodley from Ingo Magazine and NHL.com joins us. Uh, Skinner's going tonight, then he's going to go one of the uh, the final two games. So I know you talk lots of goalie coaches about rest, Kev, so I'm going to ask you a scenario. Because um, let's assume that the games don't mean anything because Vancouver wins on Tuesday. So if you're Stuart Skinner, do you want Monday, two days off, Thursday, two days off, and it looks like Edmonton might play Sunday? Or do you say, no, I want to go Monday, Wednesday, and then get three days off before the game? It, when you talk to goalies, is there one that you think is better historically? Well, two versus three isn't a huge stretch, right? Like that's, you know, like I, you know, I think a team like Nashville that might have eight days off before the playoffs start, and, and that might be a tougher decision. I, I'm assuming they're starting Soros tonight because they want it to be eight rather than 10 or 11. Um, yeah. I, I'd lean towards wanting more time off. I'd also lean towards, honestly, I'd probably be looking at the front end of back-to-back, -back, Jason, because – is that where I'm getting the best effort out of my team? Is there still okay. something on the line in that game that might not be on the line for the last one on this? Because because what you worry about is being stuck behind a team that's as much as we, everyone says, hey, like we got to treat this like a regular game. When you don't, that tends those details and that work ethic tend to slip defensively first. So now you've got a goalie heading into the playoffs, maybe behind a team that's not defending as hard or in the in the ways they normally would. And are his reads, you're not going to get messed up in one game. But, man, you could build a lot of negative momentum and, and kill a lot of confidence with a tough night like that. It's one of the reasons the Canucks face the decision if, if they win on Tuesday and the game in Winnipeg on Thursday means nothing and you're going to rest, guys, do you still give Demko so he can have the live fire? But is there a risk it might not actually be like an NHL game if neither team is really, you know, turns into pond hockey out there in an all-star game? Not the best mm -hmm. way to go into playoffs confidence wise okay that's interesting yeah so if you're edmonton you might go uh play him in arizona for Stuart skinner and then give um picker the last game against colorado because it might not mean nothing and you give skinner uh, an extra day's rest uh in between uh we do know the one matchup we just don't know who's starting at home but we know colorado's playing winnipeg kev and uh jared bedner came out and was like hey our goaltending's got to be better and obviously he's talking about his starter um, you've got Connor Hellebuck and the Jets are rolling right now. They went in and absolutely obliterated Colorado seven, nothing, uh, the other day. And, and then Colorado blew the three, nothing lead in the third period against Vegas. What would it take for you to play Ananin? Like, would you start him in game one or do you at least have to give a go? He's been your guy all year long and then wait to game two. What would be your strategy for goaltending there? I, I think you got to go Georgiev um, out of the shoot just because he a, he was really good in the playoffs for them last year. He's your guy. Um, but frankly, on the flip side of that, Jason, like I'm not sure they've started Eustace and enough. I would have liked to have seen him. We talked about this a couple of weeks ago. Like his adjusted numbers were off the charts. Now, again, against weaker opponents, typically, yep. um, they've been careful where they've started him. I would have liked to have maybe seen him against okay. one of the you know big name teams in the NHL down the stretch here. And we haven't other than a relief appearance when it was already over because Georgiev got pulled. So I think not only because of the status of Georgiev as your guy and your playoff starter last year, but just the way they've handled this workload, I'm not sure throwing, you know, Eustace Annan in, uh, in against the Winnipeg Jets in the heat of a playoff battle. Like, you know, I, I would have liked to have seen them maybe balance this out because they haven't. Uh, I, I don't think they have a choice but to ride Georgiev early. Uh, but because of that discrepancy and because as Bednar pointed out, like it's just not gone the right way recently. I'm no. a big Georgiev believer, but it's like the wheels feel a little bit off there at times. And yeah. that's a tough way to go into the postseason for sure, especially when the guy at the other end of the rink is going to win his second best of trophy. Well, and the other thing is like they're just not playing very good defensively in front of them. Like this month, it's Kev, on here. yeah, it's six against Edmonton, seven against Winnipeg, seven against Dallas, four in a. Um, the last 20 minutes against Vegas, like 24 goals in four games against playoff bound teams does not look good. No. And, and listen, like, like it is a little bit of both, but all year, Jason, like on the season as a whole, Georgiev is below expected, like 0.6%. Yep. 
you know, last time I looked, like out of 72 qualifying goalies, his adjusted save percentage ranked 55th, right? Like, so this is sort of outside of the first week of the, or first month of the season when he was legitimately playing like a Vesna guy and they just kept rolling him out there night after night after night. Uh, since then, you know, he just hasn't been at that level. And so, again, I believe in him as a goaltender. When he was in New York, I thought he was a guy that was up for this task. I thought he showed that last year. Um, but he's going to have to erase a lot of doubts that have crept in as this, maybe not me personally, but, you know, around the league as this sort of season has unfolded and he's been unable to sort of get himself, you know, back to even the level he played at last year. Kevin Whitley from Ingo Magazine and NHL.com joins us. Kev, what would you do if you're Boston for the playoffs? Are you riding one guy or are you rotating? I'm rotating just because of how it went down last year. Like you've done it all year. And then all of a sudden you ask Lena Salmark. And I wonder, you know, I, I actually regret this, not sort of having this conversation off the record with him when they came through town here this year. But, you know, where was the health at? But certainly, you know, by the end, they, they end up going to Swayman in game seven against Florida. By then it was too late. I know it's really hard. But if you do it all season, like I understand the pushback on, on, and you know me, I'm all about the tandems and I love it. And if you do it all year, what can you do in the playoffs? Um, but I honestly think not going to it last year hurt them. So I would be surprised if they didn't too. Now, I don't know if that's one on one off straight rotation, uh, but, but they've done it now for what, three months now, just back and forth, yeah. back and forth. That in mm -hmm. itself is a rhythm. So why not maintain it when the playoffs start? Yeah, it, it would be shocking to like, to me, if, Get whatever got you to the dance, continue to do it. Right. And and I think especially, you know, we're seeing this with some of the guys again. I know like right after I got off the air with you on Monday, talking about how Charlie Lindgren looked like he might be wearing out. I think he stopped like 42 or 43 and made me look like an idiot. But again, in the games that have followed Alex Nadelkovic, same thing. Like I feel like they've kind of played the wheels off these guys. And so if you haven't ridden a guy like a number one all year, he hasn't played four games in a week or three you know, every second night for four straight to expect it to all of a sudden be no problem in the playoffs, even if he is rested, you know, in a lot of ways that doesn't make any sense either. What about the fact in, in big games, like you look at some of the goalies, Sorokin's not even their guy right now down the stretch. It's Varlamov. He's playing again tonight and they're up to nothing on the verge of clinching a playoff spot. Is Sorokin going to be the backup? What do you make of that situation in Long Island? Yeah, it hasn't gone well since Patrick Waugh got there. I don't know if that's, I mean, we know what Ilya Sorokin is, what he, what he's what he's supposed to be, what he has been for most of his career, an elite number one, sort of a guy, you know, who, I, frankly, I know goalie people that had him ahead of Shesterkin. I didn't personally, but um, they believe in him as a goaltender and think he's legit, like one of those few elite guys in the league, and now he's not even starting the playoffs. Barlamov's a hell of a goalie who's had a hell of a career. The bigger question, and I would not be surprised at all the way it's going, Patrick Waugh's not going to hesitate to, to start the guy that got him there. Uh, much like Florida didn't hesitate last year to start Alex Lyon when he got them to the playoffs ahead of Bobrovsky. At least maybe it's a shorter leash. But to me, the, the bigger question is long-term. Like if Patrick was your coach, he's a Hall of Fame goaltender who doesn't pull any punches. And for whatever reason, it feels like the pressure of that, um, at least from the outside, I'm sure they've got more thoughts on it. But from the outside, it kind of feels like the pressure of that has not gone the right way for Ilya Sorokin there. And that, to me, it's not even about the playoffs. I don't expect to see him unless they're in trouble or Varlamov really falters. And that's saying something. The bigger question is long-term. I think this guy, does his contract start next year at eight and a half a season? Yeah. It's a, it's a fascinating one. But I, I don't think I've ever seen, like, that was their guy. Now, Varlamov's very good, don't get me wrong. And I understand why they're playing him, but... Um, it is kind of fascinating when you look around the league, Kev, at some of the goalies that are starting in games that are like must win games, like huge games for their teams here down the stretch, right? Like, you know, you, we looked at uh, in Pittsburgh, for instance, and they're leading Nashville uh, two nothing tonight. And so they, they needed a, a big win from their goalie and look who they have playing in goal. Like what, what do you make of that situation? Do you think like they're like Najelkovic is going again tonight? Um, are some of these guys like they're just going to be burnt out by the time they get to the postseason? Even if they get in, like Lingren, I think tonight's 14 of 15 starts, and the Jelkovic is like 12 of 13 or whatever. It's like once they get there, they might not have anything left, or because they've been doing it for this long, they should be fine with it. I, I wonder what they're going to have left, to be honest, Jason, because I think I was actually on Pittsburgh pregame radio today talking about that. It is 12 straight for Ned, and coming into tonight, like the last four were sub 900, right? Like that's not all on him. 
but especially if you haven't been a number one, he has in the past. But like, you know, the comparison tonight that they made was, oh, how does UC Soros do it? He's playing like his 64th game. He leads the league. And I'm like, yeah, look it up. I gar- I'm almost willing to guarantee that in those 64, he never played 12 straight like Ned is doing right now. Like, yeah. so when you're asking a guy who's a 1B to all of a sudden have a workload that's, you know, more stringent or, or a tougher test than the biggest workhorses in the entire league, a Hellebuck or a Sartre, like, that's a big ass. And again, yeah. we talked to, you saw Casey to Smith on Saturday. Look great. Yeah. That's a guy that lost his job the previous two games to Arthur Seeloff. Seeloff started two in a row, and I think it was four or six because Casey yeah. had struggled. And talking to Casey today, it was more the mental than it was the physical. When it starts to go bad, it's really hard when you don't have that time to sort of take a deep breath, step back, and reset. Uh, you saw how good he was after getting that reset. The problem for Washington, the problem for Pittsburgh, is they need every game. They can't afford to sit Nadelkovic. Yeah. Despite the fact they've got Jari, they can't afford to sit Lindgren, despite the fact they've got Darcy Kemper making five million on the bench or five and a quarter because they need them every night. But at some point, the diminishing returns are going to catch up. Good for Ned that it hasn't caught up so far tonight. But I think there are examples for both goalies in the last couple of weeks or last last week in particular where it clearly has caught up to them. And the big question, I'm sure they don't care if they get into the playoffs, yeah. but it's a really good question, Jason. Will What will they have left? Might depend yeah. on how quickly they start. Yeah, for some of them at this point, like there's nothing worse than finishing ninth, right? Like at least if you finish eighth, your fans are like, all right, we're close. And then you never know what can happen. But more importantly, you get some home playoff dates and you get some experience maybe for your young guys. Like, you know, those teams that are going to miss in the East are going to be like, oh, my, what a waste, essentially. We, you know, we bust our butts here down the stretch for nothing. Other than, I guess, the experience of being in the playoff race. But uh, that'll probably be a little bit hollow. Uh, well, let's. Let's let's here's one for you. What coach is going to be brave enough to have whether it's an Adelkovic or a Lindgren get them in maybe on the last game of the season? I, I haven't checked the schedule. Say that play Thursday, yeah, or Wednesday, and then they got to turn it over and start on Saturday. And they know that that goalie is running about seventy five percent at this point because of all these games played. Is either one of them going to be brave enough to say, "Hey, I trust Tristan Jari now"? or I'm going to put there like for game one, it reminds me of Vegas when they had Laner and Flurry. Remember Flurry got them through the first round against Minnesota. And then all of a sudden to start round two, because it was a quick turnaround, Vegas went to Rob and Laner because they knew Flurry was already running at some point. If your goalie's running out of gas, you need to pull them back and give them a chance to reset so you're not running them out there at 70%, 75%. Give them a chance to get back to 90, 95, even if it costs you a game. Yeah. Well, it's going to be fascinating stuff, Kev. We'll have all, all the breakdowns. Um, uh, we might get you on for a bonus one uh, before the playoffs start. So uh, we'll talk about that off air with you. So as always, we appreciate it. Uh, enjoy the game tomorrow night. I will for sure. Always enjoy my time, Jason. If you need an extra one, I'm here for you, buddy. There you go. That's uh, Kevin Woodley from In Goal Magazine and NHL.com. Always love talking. Uh, Hockey and uh, specifically goaltending with uh, Woodley. 540. Uh, when we come back, it's uh, Wanye's World. We'll get to the lineup and more on the Gregor Show presented by PlayAlberta.ca. When the temperature drops to below free.
seven. Jason Greger with you on uh, Sports fourteen uh, forty. The uh, lineup brought to you by Short Power Sports and Marine coming uh, this Saturday as they will have their uh, grand opening from 11 a.m. until 3 p.m. Uh, grand prize giveaway. Someone's going to win a Vamoose Ranger STE bike. Sweet. The uh, portable power inverter generator, the Tohatsu outboard motor, and more. Check it out this Saturday at Sherwood Power Sports. And Marine, uh, the big lineup change, of course, the orders. Connor McDavid is back. Evander Kane is out. A uh, little bit nicked up of his playoffs. He would play. Um, Stuart Skinner will uh, start in goal. You will have uh, the same defense. Baron Stetcher uh, uh, won't play, but I expect him to play in Arizona on Wednesday. And uh, also, uh, Carrick is in. Ryan is out. So Ryan and Kane are out. Uh, San Jose has uh, a lineup with uh, lots of uh, lots of young players that uh, uh, some of you uh, might not know. And that's what happens when it's a team that's uh, uh, going for it. But uh, Giovanni Smith is in. Daniil Jushkin. Uh, you've got uh, Stadnika. Clean Kostin, former Oiler, will be uh, playing with Colin Graff. Uh, William Eklund on the back end, Ferraro Burroughs. Jack Thompson will make his NHL debut for the Sharks on the uh, the back end. So uh, lots of changes there in the uh, lineup for the San Jose Sharks. This is a game the order should win. This is a game I expect the orders to win big, if we're being honest. Um, San Jose is just not that good of a team. So there you have it. Let's get to uh, Wanye's world now. Brought to you by Action Electrical. You heard it here earlier in the show. Uh, we are giving away, courtesy of Action, a $15,000 solar system for your home. Tune in every day between 4 o'clock for a contest to win a $15,000 unit, courtesy of Action Electrical. You consider yourself a hockey fan, Gregor? Uh, now and then. Yeah, you like hockey? You ever, you ever follow the WHL? You ever pay attention? Yeah, I kind of know what's going on a little bit in yeah. the dub. Yeah, I like the dub. Familiar WH with... WHL playoffs are going on right now. Yeah. yeah, yeah, second round. You familiar with the Moose Jaw Warriors? I don't know if you're familiar with the Moose Jaw Warriors. I've uh, I've uh, been there to uh, playoff games in the jaw. Yeah. I'm looking at notable alumni on Wikipedia right now with Moose Jaw Warriors. Someone is related to you, so you you would consider yourself on some level a Warriors fan. Uh, I like Moose Jaw, yeah. It's a great town. We're up. We're back. No, the word, yeah, they're tied with the Broncos in the second round. Beat Brandon handily. Yeah, swept them, yeah. Yeah, Swift Current came in, thumped us game one. Thought they had our hearts broken, but we came back 7-2. Gave them a beating in game two. Mm -hmm. And it's it's great times. We were out there two weeks ago in, in Moose Jaw at the game. The vibes were great. It was immaculate. You can't beat the How's WHL. the crowds? Pretty good. Yeah. Pretty good. I, it wasn't full, but it wasn't, you know, sparse. But uh, I think like a lot of junior teams like a lot of teams are money's tight mm -hmm. people don't necessarily have uh the ability to go to every game yeah. but, but they're definitely supported as by they the go city. deeper like anything all of a sudden be, Ooh, geez i gotta go that's so, right yeah and they haven't had a deep run in a while I'm like geez i'm trying to think the last time moose draw was in the conference final like the third round it's been a long time so 2000 i think six is yeah. the only time they went to whl finally got swept by the giants yeah so they got uh, if they win then they'll take on the blades which yeah. is quite the rivalry that's too, the war so. oh yeah oh yeah so, yeah, no, Moose Jaw. Did you go in the tunnels? Well, you've been in the tunnels before. Then. You know what? I've never been in the tunnels. Gregor. What? Yes. How can you be a Moose Jaw fan and not go to the tunnels? That but is But you're like a history tourists. guy. That's for tourists. Dude, no, no, no. It's, I am to the wedding you. in Moose Jaw, and I got a shirt that says Honorary Moose Jaw Citizen, yeah. and that exempts me right. from the tunnels. That sounds like it's fake. Sounds if you're like in Vegas, fake. you don't go to the Strip every day. If you live in Edmonton and you're not on Sports yeah, 1440. Yeah, but, but, but I'm telling you. If you've been in Vegas, you've been to the Strip once. Of course. Yeah, well, you haven't been to the tunnels once. I know where the entrance is. Doesn't matter. You haven't been there. Wow. Dude, you should go. It's unreal. I loved it. It's really good. A friend of mine in Moose Jaw was the, like, in-character host. And one time we were sitting around a backyard fire, and I was like, I don't want to go to the tunnels. Can you give me the gist of it in-character? And he did. That's when you're an honorary Moose Jaw citizen. You get those inside looks. Yeah. So, Well, if you're out there and you love the Warriors like I do, well, that's game Swift Current team is no joke, though. They're no joke. That'll be a hell of a series. They got a guy, a defenseman, Denton Matichuk. And uh, he's for Moose Jaw. Enormous, Gregor. He must be 10 feet tall if he's an inch. And when I was out there, there was a guy sitting behind me in the stands who, for some reason, loved the Warriors but could not stand old Denton. And Denton had four points that night, and this guy was chirping him so hard. And I turned around at one point and was like, what more do you want this kid to do? He has four points. And this guy was livid. So last night, Matichuk had one goal and five assists. I know. But at six points, yeah. he's a D-man. Like Columbus. Come like, on. That guy should be uh should be helping out your power play. Like he's an offensive mind of defense when there's no doubt about it. He, he leads him in playoff scoring, does he not? I think he's got yeah. like 14 points or he something. He sure does. Yeah. And if you look that guy that was sitting behind me somewhere, he's mad as heck in Moose Jaw. Because he hates this player for some reason or other. 
But then just putting up big numbers. Oh, so go Warriors. Uh, it happens in every, don't they? The Furcus Circus. Yeah. They got Maddie Savoy yeah. out there. Uh, Braden Jaeger. Like, they got some good players. Braden Jaeger and Jaeger Furcus, they call them two shots of Jaeger. <laughs> the best. Jaeger Furcus, Braden Jaeger. That's actually two funny. shots of Jaeger. It it's was funny. It's not bad. It's, it's not bad. Good. I'll give it to him. I like that, actually. It's good. But yeah, no, they got like, they got some big time offensive guys at the WHL level. It would be so nice for everybody in Moose Jaw if the Warriors could go deep. Because they've just, they've been around since 84, I think. Yep. Never won anything. This could be our year. <laughs> Are you going back? I will if we go deep. If, I won't go this round, but I'll go next round. Against Saskatoon? Mm -hmm. Ooh, I'd even go to Saskatoon and do a home and home. Oh, yeah. Well, why not? It's not that jerk. far. No. Yeah. No, that would be uh, great. So, yeah, check it out a little uh, WHL action. Of course, uh, they are back in action. Uh, Moose Jaw, I think, plays on Wednesday. Right? I yep. think they have, uh, they're not back tomorrow. I think nope. they play on Wednesday. A little break. So, there you go. no, 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 they play tomorrow. Do they? Yeah. Oh, yeah. They're uh, playing tomorrow. I'm pretty sure, anyway. So, yeah. No, no, yeah, they do. They play tomorrow in well, uh, Swift Current. Well, whenever we face you, Swift, your time is up. Mm -hmm. Speedy Creek is nothing. Oh, should be fun, buddy. That's Tuesday, what Moose Jobby and that's what back we call Swift oh, Current. Swift Current. I know. Oiler game tonight against the Sharks. All a win tonight just keeps orders chances, albeit slim, but their chances of catching Vancouver. Uh, but also potentially getting ahead of Colorado if you're looking for um chance of maybe meeting in the third round. Home ice advantage always matters. So there's still something on the line. Also, there's that 100 assist plateau. Kucherov, no assists in the uh, first period, if you're uh, if you're wondering. But Conman will update you some huge playoff implication games going on tonight in the National Hockey League. On behalf of uh Wanya and Connor, I'm Jason Greger. Have yourselves. A wonderful night. Let's get to uh, Sports 1440 update brought to you by Legacy Heating and Cooling, where the rates never change. No overtime charges. Furnace repairs, AC unit breaks down. Give them a call. They'll fix it. No overtime charges. LegacyHeating.ca. Good night. This is a Sports 1440 update. Game day. The Oilers taking on the San Jose Sharks and a Rogers place. Puck drop just after 7 o'clock. Connor McDavid returning to the lineup in this one for pregame coverage. You got pregame with Boardsy with host Aaron Bordado across the Oilers Nation Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube streams. A busy night in the NHL. Following games are at the first intermission. Penguins up on the Preds 2 0. Islanders have a 2 0 lead over the Devils. The Lightning trail the Sabres 1 0. Red Wings trail the Canadians 2 1. You've got the Caps up on the Bruins 1 0. And the Rangers lead the Sens 1 0 midway through the first. Elsewhere tonight, the Wild in LA to take on the Kings. Major League Baseball, the Blue Jays. Are in action right now, leading the Yankees 2-1 in the top of the third. Elsewhere, the Rangers have a one up lead over the Tigers. Marlins on top of the Giants, 3-1. Rockies, Phillies tied a one apiece, and the Twins trail the Orioles, 4-2. That's in the top of the fifth. Still to come, you got the Astros, Braves, Cubbies in the desert, taking on the Diamondbacks, Athletics, Cards, and Dodgers Nationals. Earlier today, Guardians knocked off the Red Sox, 6-0. WHL playoffs, Portland in Everett taking on the Silver Tips. That one gets going just after 8 o'clock. Winterhawks lead that series two games to none. And the WNBA draft currently underway. Caitlin Clark, no surprise, going number one overall to Indiana. For the number two pick, Los Angeles takes Cameron Brink, power forward out of Stanford. That'll do it for us here on the Jason Greger Show. We've got Fox Sports Radio coming up at 9 o'clock. And then tomorrow morning, Carius Douglas return at 7 a.m. to recap Oilers, Sharks. They'll be with special guest co-host hockey hall of famer grant fear i'm connor halley this has been a sports 1440 update it's sports 144